second, nearly. We did start. It's okay. We did start, but it um, looks like we're going to have to start all over again because we have no sound. But I can hear myself there. Um, so we did start. It's okay. We did start, but it um, looks like we're going to start all over again because we have no sound. I can hear myself there. So this may come out live again, but apologies to it all.
it's technical problems and nothing I can do about it. We'll just have to start again when we're ready to go. Apologies. Am I, am I going to hear myself again? Right, okay, let's go after that delay. And uh, right, welcome to the planning committee, Wednesday, 22nd of June again. Um, and we'll just go through the agenda. Sorry, I should say, planning where everyone is in the room for those that are online. Um, so we have the councillors in the centre section. We have the officers on the left, sorry, the councillors and the committee that I should say, the officers on the left and uh, speakers, objectors and uh, applicants on the left, or on the right. And we have Councillor Conti uh, sitting in the back there, who's ward councillor speaking tonight. So, um, Okay, let's go ahead with the agenda. Um, apologies and substitutions. We mentioned it, but we'll mention it again. Councillor Gallant is substituting for Councillor Young. Uh, we have no other apologies or no other substitutions. Um, we have no urgent matters. We have no declarations of interest. And we have, oh, sorry, I'll open it up again. Uh, have we got any declarations of interest? Right. Um, uh, no matters to be considered in private. And uh, we go on to the minutes of the last two meetings, uh, 17th of November, 21, and 16th of February, 22. Are those agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, site visit attendance. Uh, let's go through those again. I think I was right, but we'll do it again. So myself, Councillor Mahmood, Councillor Ball, Councillor Kelly, Councillor Iqbal, Councillor Pada, Councillor Rice, Councillor Sahota, and that's it, I believe, on the site visits on Saturday. Um, okay, so without further ado, and I think we're up Chair. and running out externally. Chair, I, I don't think there's anything being, being streamed picture-wise. Linda, I think the video needs to be on. Take three. Right. Okay. So, right. I'm not going to repeat that again. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that again. So we have got to, on the agenda to hang a lane. So I should explain the order of the agenda tonight. 
I'm just uh, putting Hangar Lane is number one. Uh, I'm pushing up site of former North Oak Grange Community Centre because we have an objector and an agent speaking tonight on that. So that's going to be number two. And then we'll drop back onto the agenda as was, uh, with number three being Westworld, number four being former North Oak Park Social Club, and number five being the Straight South Oak. Okay. So, um, Hang Lane Gyratory, uh, is that you, Sean? Um, can you present, please? Mm -hmm. Right, you ready to go, Sean? Okay. Uh, so, good evening. Uh, this is item one, which is at Hangar Lane Gyratory. Uh, the proposal is for an upwards extension of an implemented building of between two and three stories, uh, with more detail just to follow. Um, so, for context, uh, the site is located within the centre of Hangar Lane Gyratory. So, on the photos you can see above, uh, the left is a a satellite view, the right is the red line boundary. Uh, so this is located uh, just north of the central line at Hang and Hangar Lane uh, Underground Station and is within an area of PTAL value of five, which is good. Uh, the surrounding area is a mixture around the gyratory. So on the uh, western side is uh, larger buildings of up to eight to 10 storeys. Uh, to the north and to the east, are resident, residential with some commercial of between two and three stories. To the south west is the Brunswick Conservation Area, and to the south east is the Hangar uh, Lane Haymills Estate Conservation Area. Uh, so, as mentioned at the beginning, of the, this proposal seeks three additional stories with a roof terrace on the implemented 13 storey building. So, with a two storey extension to the implemented seven and nine storey buildings uh, and a three storey extension to the 13 storey buildings. So, combine it be from 13 to 16, from seven to nine, from nine to 11 storeys at the respective places. Uh, there'll be another picture coming up. Uh, the proposal incorporates additional 144 units, of which 50 are affordable, which equates to 35%. Uh, there is also some internal alteration regarding the cycle space and student amenity and leisure proposed within the site. Uh, so regarding consultation, the applicant took some pre-consultation before uh, the submission, uh, but during the formal consultation period, we received six public objections, one objection from the conservation area panel, the Brunswick, and um, that's highlighted in your briefing notes, just so you make reference, uh, as well as an objection from the West Whiteford Residents Association. Um, I've outlined the summary of the matters that were raised, uh, but these are outlined further in the report, uh, was the main being about the character and the height. Uh, so regarding scale and design, as mentioned, it's two add two stories to the infill blocks, two stories to the infill blocks on the east, and an extra three stories to the largest block on the west side of the site. Uh, this also includes additional commun communal spaces. So this is on top of the implemented scheme. So when we compare the implemented and proposed, this gives you an idea of the height. So you can see the crown as the setback at the uppermost floors. 
uh, and in terms of the CGIs, you can see above, these are also in the committee report, um, if you need a closer look, or I could come back to this for any questions. Um, so you can see a very similar design between the two. Um, the maximum increase in the height is 6.7 metres on the western block and 5.3 metres on the two smaller blocks. Uh, as approved with the uh, previous implemented scheme, uh, the uppermost floor will have a copper finish, so in time it will go blue and not just copper, hence the design in the CGIs. So um, regarding some matters, uh, to just give you a bit more detail from the committee report, uh, one matter was about the disabled access. So this has been, this is images included in the briefing note, um, if any of you need further information. Uh, but the proposal incorporates wheelchair units within the site and within the section 106 includes a creation of an on-street disabled parking bay within the facility. Now with the implemented scheme, this was located at Priory Gardens and it's intended that this will be in a similar location. So that is to the north of this picture. And the blue line, which uh, you can probably see just goes around the site, uh, is the route that it would take to get from the parking base to the site itself. And so this includes um, improvements to the existing subway by TfL and London Borough of Ealing through the Section 106 and the implemented permission. So um, some of you may have seen this on site. I'm not sure if you saw this access point, but this is the point closest to Priory Gardens where the disabled parking will be. Um, so at the moment, this is the existing ramp entrance, which can be used by cycles as well as pedestrians. And as part of the funding for the implemented scheme will involve improvements to this area. Uh, regarding affordable units, I noticed a lot of text. It's all in your briefing notes, uh, but it's just to highlight um, because affordable units for students are uh, different to affordable for traditional residential setting. Um, so it is noted that the discounted rent is set out in the London plan, and this would meet that. And students are nominated by the relevant institution as part of a nomination agreement, which is worded in the Section 106 legal agreement. So they would need to go into a nomination agreement prior to signing the Section 106. Um, the units are the affordable units are spread so they're pepper potted. Uh, there'll be more details on that in the next few slides uh, across the building, and that is as per the implemented scheme as stated in the section 106 as well. Uh, and this works best for the applicant as well as their policies in terms of an operational point of view to have it spread across the entire building. Okay, so this image is also in your briefing note. This is the breakdown of the affordable units and market units. Um, they to get from this is the changes, which is the center columns up here. So um, in terms of the affordable units, there are 50 affordable units in total, of which six uh, are disabled units, 12 are the cluster units, 26 are studio units, and six are the double units. Uh, and then the other 94 homes are market housing, which market student accommodation still. Uh, and that's also broken down in this table. Uh, I'd just like to draw your attention to that in the briefing note, uh, so you can see the difference between the implemented and the proposed scheme in terms of total numbers, as well as the changes just for the additional floors. Um, so outside the academic year, um, so in terms of the affordable homes, affordable student housing, the London plan specifies us for the academic year, which is 38 weeks a year, not 52. So for the other 14 weeks, the London plan um, specifies that during vacation periods that these buildings can be used for ancillary uses. So if there's like a summer school, you could use the rooms to house people in the summer school. Uh, this is to maximise deliverability of student homes within the site, and that's why they state that in the London plan. Uh, this is in line with the existing implemented permission and the existing S106 on the site, and it's maintained throughout this permission. So just to conclude this overall development, uh, there are 144 student rooms, 50 are affordable, which is 35% of the uplifted units. Um, the additional height is in a very sustainable location in a good PTAR rating, close to underground stations. The character represents both the original consent and improves the designs at the uppermost floor, makes it a pinnacle point on the Hangling gyratory. Um, in terms of impacts to neighbouring properties, this is specified in the report, but it's seen to have an acceptable impact in terms of daylight, sunlight, overshadowing given its location and isolated position in the middle of the gyratory. Uh, there is a minor impact to future residents in terms of some of the daylight to the rooms as specified in the report. However, this is still in keeping with developments within an urban location. 
Um, there are sexual politics contributions, so you'll see this in the heads of terms in the, near the start of the report. This goes towards the proof of the cycle quiet way, so this is the link between Elin Broadway and Hangar Lane Driver Train Roundabout. Uh, that can obviously be used by anybody because it'll be a cycle lane and it'll be for the transport team at Ealing to use that money. Um, also improvements to local indoor and outdoor sports facilities. So this is from Active Ealing's contribution. So although this is to offset this development, when they come to improve those facilities, which is what they decide in what location, anyone would be able to use it. Uh, and the same with the parks, so that would do improvements to local parks. So although this is offset, it will improve local parts for local people. And it will also offset the impacts of development through health care, et cetera, funding that you can see in the heads of terms. Um, so the recommendation is to grant subject to conditions and section 106 listed in the report. Just want to highlight the brief note again. And so there was the conservation area comments were accidentally placed in the wrong section, but these are highlighted to make it clear. They were still assessed in the report just to make clear where they are. Um, also additional information about the affordable rent and the disabled offsite park provision in terms of the mat. And also uh, one condition has been amended uh, to include disabled uh, loaded and unloaded during uh, moving in. Uh, so if you have any questions. No, we don't have questions at the moment, Sean. We have an objector, um, which is uh, John Hatson. If you'd like to come up, John. We, we will have questions, but not yet. Sorry, Sean, I can't agree with you. Um, sorry, I've got three can minutes. I introduce myself first? You can. I'm just going to tell you, like I tell everyone, that you've got three minutes yeah. and you can't go over three minutes. We yeah. will give you a 30 second warning. Yeah. Yeah. And but introduce yourself and then we'll start the clock running. Okay. I'm yeah, sorry. You may want to bring your microphone closer to you. I'm John Haston, a local resident um, in the West Twyford area of Ealing. Um, I'm a retired, last time you asked me what I did for a living, I'm a retired design and construction planner a um, long time ago. Um, and I objected to this scheme and I still object to the scheme. I may start now if I may on my objections. Um, this is an increase of 40% population in the area. It goes from 700 up to 1,000 occupants in the building. This is quite an increase, a huge increase, which results in a much bigger building. And the previous application modified the cladding that you talked about to a repetitive, monotonous, one size, one shape, panel that will fit all locations just about so it, it's a repetitive building that sits high on hangar lane gyratory system and the photographs that you showed are rather disingenuous because they're taken with a wide angle lens at a distance and you come along the a406 or come along the a40 you come to a very large building which is on the top of a hill and it overshadows anything around it, even Westgate House, which is much lower. And it's disingenuous to talk about OPDC um, heights because they're in a different ruling category, etc. You end up with a building that is so monotonous, it's unbelievable. This is not the gate, this is not an exciting building, which is a gateway to Ealing. This is a monotonous slab, if you like from my, my opinion. So I don't agree with you on your take on the architecture and on the, um, the, the improvements. I don't think they're improvements. I think they're a, a degrading step. It's far too big a building for the site. And the building occupies the whole site. There are no green spaces um, in, on the development at all. The ground floor is not available for games or anything like that it doesn't give anything back to the, the the community access for the disabled you mentioned and okay from priory gardens you can get out your car you can go down the ramp fine you don't need any energy to do that but you ain't got to climb a hill to get up to the front door yeah every 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 access you use you have to use two ramps the revised application is sorry um, does not consider giving anything back to the community around the building 
and I have very concerns about the speed of construction, the rate they're going at. I think it will be another 10 years before we finish. And I'm very concerned about the freestanding tower crane that sits on site overlooking the railway. John, I have to, Thank I have you. to butt in there. Thank you very much for your contribution. That's three minutes. And we now have the applicant, uh, Sunny Desai, um, for the applicant. You again have three minutes and you'll get a 30 second warning and I will stop you at three minutes. Super, thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sunny Desai of DP9 uh, Limited and I'm the planning consultant for this application. Um, the development before you extends upon the consented and implemented permission, as you've heard, uh, for purpose-built student accommodation through two to three storey upward extensions. No changes are proposed to the ground floor or the access to the building. The applicant, Hallmark Properties, is seeking to meet the continued need for private student accommodation in West London and to enhance the communal facilities within the building. The development would provide an additional 144 ensuite high-quality student rooms to help meet this demand while also potentially freeing up larger houses and apartments within the borough for local families. The development would optimise the potential of the site in accordance with the London plan policies. The proposals would not just deliver the additional rooms, they would also deliver an increased quantum of communal amenities for the residents, improving the building-wide ratio from the consented position. Um, it would deliver a ratio of 4.8 square metres of amenity per room, uh, which compares very fav favourably with traditional student accommodation. Communal facilities are provided, including a screening room, a gym, lecture theatres, uh, classroom space, a rooftop terrace and cafe. As set out in the planning submission, the development is planned to be integrated with the local community and local communities are encouraged to utilise these communal facilities on a structured terms. This can be secured within the 106. The original consent, as you've heard, provided for 56 affordable units, a late stage review mechanism and a payment of 250,000. The extensions now proposed would deliver an additional 50 affordable units, almost 100% increase over the consent. This provides 35% of affordable uh, in line with London plan requirements. As you've heard, the affordable rooms will be pepper potted and comprise a range of room types. Um, in terms of the design, the site is a unique context and, and is positioned well away from neighbouring properties and heritage assets. As part of the pre-application consultation with local stakeholders, the height of the tallest element was reduced and additional townscape testing was uh, undertaken. The visual impact is considered minimal as shown by the verified views that were taken as part and submitted as part of the application. It's considered that particularly the, the Western element and the proposed elongated copper fins um, are enhancement of the consented design. We agree with the officer assessment in respect of design uh, that states in terms of the architecture and the proposed material palette is considered high quality and would have a positive visual impact on this part of the A40 and complementary to the extent permission on the site. Your officers also conclude that in terms of daylight and sunlight, privacy and outlook, the proposal is acceptable. So in summary, the development, th 30 seconds, perfect. Um, the would deliver 144 high quality student rooms to meet a identified need, would deliver almost 100% increase in affordable rooms, would increase the overall ratio of, of amenity space and communal facilities per room to 4.8 square meters, would provide the potential for community access to these communal facilities and would provide uh, Section 106 contributions beyond the existing consent of circa 350,000. We hope you'll be able to support the application today. Uh, the, applicant, thank the, you. the applicant is also in attendance to answer any questions. If thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Um, right. OK, we have a ward councillor, Councillor Conti, uh, who would like to speak for, and I'll remind you, up to five minutes. You don't have to use all five minutes. I don't think I will. So. That's OK. Um, so I urge the planning committee this evening to reject this proposal to further increase the height of this already approved 7, 9 and 13 storey development to 16, 9 and 11 storey, which will see the, a 25% increase in room numbers and up to 40% more students living on the site. The report states that the form, scale and the height of, this, of these buildings would not be out of place in this context. This is not the case. Westgate House to the West is lower in height and starts at a lower level than these buildings in the centre of the gyratory, which, as John has already said, are up on a hill. The homes directly behind the development in Priory Gardens and on Clavelli Crescent are just one uh, ground and first floor properties, along with those on Twyford Abbey Road. Additionally, there is wider impact on the two neighbouring conservation areas of Brunswick, and the Hanger Hill Estate, which will see the towering developments from well within their areas. 
It also occupies the whole footprint of the site. And this green space is one of the only two remaining green spaces in the West Twyford area. The documents on the planning portal, portal also reference Manhattan Business Park as a point of reference. This development is not even being granted permit, permission, never mind being built. The report states that development is in an island and therefore avoids any adverse impact on its neighbours. Looking at the, both the images on the report and also the CGI uh, viewpoint appendix, um, many of these photos are taken with wide, wide angled lenses, but also many, many of the views are obstructed by trees. Despite, the, despite this, view 16 on, from Clarendon Road does highlight what impact the further height will have on the Brunswick conservation area. However, there are crucial images that are missing. There's no views being shown from Priory Gardens, which is the street most directly affected. And additionally, there's only one photo from Twyford Abbey Road, and there's a tree very clearly at the, at the point of which the, the buildings would be seen. These buildings are going to overbear and overshadow the surrounding area. From your site visit this weekend, you would appreciate the height already of the, the buildings that are being constructed, never mind the additional stories that would need to be added. The air quality appendix does highlight that at this location, the annual mean nitrogen dioxide concentration will be exceeded. The de development does have mitigations for this with the in, um, in the internal living environment. The students can be coming and going throughout the day, hanging around outside, and living in the centre of the Dirati, one of the most polluted roads in the borough, isn't, isn't good for any, anyone's health. The report also states there'll be little impact on traffic. However, given that it's a low car development and the change in the nature that we all shop using Deliveroo, Amazon, et cetera, there is going to be an increase in the number of deliveries. This, the report states there'll be an off-site delivery holding area. However, we all know that how delivery companies operate and in short while the access road will be used as, as a drop-off point. As we all know, Hangar Lane Geratory at the best of times is difficult to navigate due to traffic. These additional deliveries will increase the number of uh, car movements and traffic in the area. And this will be exacerbated by a further 25% increase in student accommodation that this proposal is adding to already congested sites. Additionally, on the documents in the portal on the fire statement form, it states that both the stairs size is below the recommended guidance and all the stairs accessing the upper floors are provided with connections down to the basement level, which is not compliant with the guidance. All of the stairs on the seventh, uh, sorry, after the seventh level become single staircases with no alternative escape routes. I didn't, I didn't think there was anything in the report to planning that addressed any of these concerns. I therefore urge the committee to reject this application to see a further 144 units being constructed due to the impact on additional height and massing on surrounding streets, including the two conservation areas, an impact on traffic and noise and the air quality surrounding the site. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Conti. And you were right, you didn't use all five minutes. Thank you. Um, right. Um, there's a lot there, Sean. Uh, would you like to respond to some of the comments from both uh, the objector, John, um, John Hatson, and Councillor Conti? And if there's anything you want to uh, re-emphasize from the applicant as well, please. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, in terms of the, I guess, in terms of the character uh, and uh, the design of the building, um, this design of this application is very similar to the implemented scheme in terms of. The layout of where the windows are, the materiality, uh, and the view from east, west, north, and south. So, um, I just want to highlight that the consistency between this application for the additional stories and the implemented building, which is uh, drawing construction at the moment. Um, in terms of, uh, I think mentioned disabled routes. Um, so, in the implemented building, there is uh, two hundred thousand pounds to improve the underpasses and movement around the gyro tree. Um, so this would have to be given uh, prior to the occupation for the works to be done in order for the whole site to be wheelchair accessible. And so any um, rooms or any development would have to meet the standards for accessibility. Uh, and that's also in line with London plan policies. Um, so I'm just trying to read through my notes. Uh, in terms of um, Councillor Conti, he mentioned the impact on the conservation, the two nearby conservation areas. Um, so that's the Brunswick to the south west and Anger Hill, Haymel's estate to the south east for context. Um, in terms of these being two additional floors, there are a number of viewpoints submitted through the report and it's through pink lines or yellow lines as well, if it's through trees in order to try and show the height. And because of the distance from those areas to the site, it's not considered 
um, detrimentally harmful as an increase in terms of the views and the impact on those conservation areas. Uh, in terms of uh, green space and uh, the loss of green space, uh, I just want to highlight that there are no changes to the ground floor or the public realm as part of this application. That's all been established in terms of the tree planting on site, in terms of the walkways to the site, that's all been established. Uh, and in fact, this at least gives uh, contributions to nearby parks, as mentioned in my presentation, to improve green space in nearby parks. And uh, impact on neighbouring properties, I've highlighted in the reports that uh, it's not considered that they will impact properties to the daylight, sunlight, overshadowing, due to the distance nearest property, so uh, 33 metres away. It's not considered to cause a sense of enclosure, given the number of roads around the site as well. It's very isolated. Uh, and in terms of the deliveries, um, the councillor raised concerns about the deliveries at the site for once operational as a student area. Um, I can just highlight condition 23 is that student management plan, and that can include um, facilities like the, stu the student deliveries when on site. And um, I guess they have to be in accordance with conditions as part of any planning application. And if things don't go according to conditions, and that's a different matter, but that's why the conditions are placed in order to meet those requirements. Uh, and that will be assessed when it comes to submit those documents um, as a preoccupation. Um, and it will have to be uh, reviewed by the transport team at Ealing Council prior to any approval. Uh, in terms of the fire statement, so this is consistent with the approved scheme. However, and any scheme would have to meet building regulations and fire regulations, um, most of which are outside the planning remit. However, if um, councillors wish for a fire statement condition to be placed, that can be placed um, subject to everyone else's discussions. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sean. Um, there was one thing I think the objector, Mr. Hatson, mentioned was about the accessible. I know, I know it's already extant because it, it's original permission, but would you like to walk us through the, the Priory where you drop off a Priory Road? Um, eloquently said, you, you go, it's all right going downhill, it's the going uphill part. Can you tell us what the remediation is about that? Okay, so that was um, all part of the implemented permission and in terms of the financial contributions um, sought and um, with the implementer scheme for Transport for London, because they are um, the road authority for this gyratory, given it's a major infrastructure, and for Ealing Council's Transport Department to work together to improve access around the gyratory, which includes meeting the standard requirements for uh, accessibility. So if any of the gyratory walkways need to be improved to disable to meet the current standards, then that is something that contribution which was requested in the implemented permission could be used for, and it's up to Transport for London and Ealing to work together in order to do those improvements with for the gyro tree. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Thank you, Sean. I'm going to open this up for questions. I see Councillor Rice, Councillor, well, let me write it down. <laughs> Councillor Rice, uh, Councillor Ball, um, Councillor Gallant, Councillor Kelly, Councillor Pada, uh, and Councillor Mahmood. Let me just tell you that we, as we have before, please get your questions in. I'm not going to keep going round and round for questions. If you've got more than one question, that's fine, but try and get them in, in your space, allocated space. So, okay, thank you for that. So, Councillor Rice. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm actually I'm very positive about um, even um, extending on this scheme because I could just see the benefits of um, having student accommodation. So in order that students don't end up using much in demand accommodation elsewhere in Ealing. And I and um, and I where I work, a lot of we, we get a lot of students who use the stay club in Collendale. So I know how much in demand, how much in need it is. Um, but one thing I just ask about is. Um, because I've been thinking about a comment that Councillor Stafford made yesterday in the council meeting about ensuring that we get more trees in that area. And uh, so I'm just a little bit like uncomfortable about the comment here that um, tree services have requested an, an S106 um, for tree planting on a pro rata increase. And the response has been that because the building's going up rather than outwards, it's not really necessary. 
Um, but I mean, we've certainly heard a lot of comments tonight talking about pollution in the area and potentially causing health issues. So, I, I mean, it would be fantastic if we could look at ensuring that there is more tree coverage in that area in order to, in order to actually deal with some of the issues we've discussed tonight. And it would have fantastic benefits for the for people in the area generally. Um, and, um, and maybe that would just uh, maybe that would just make it a little bit more kind of um, I mean a little bit more comfortable about the whole about the whole situation. Thank you. Sure, sure. I'm going to go through the questions. If you just make notes, and we'll come back to you rather than back and forward. That's all right, with the committee. Uh, Councillor Ball. Yeah, um, I think the applicant said something about um, it. It might be possible to um, include in the section 106 community use. Um, but there's there's nothing in the section 106 or conditions about that at the moment. Is that something that the applicant has suggested during the, you know, pre-planning stages of this, um, or or you know, if not, is it is something that we could add a, add a condition to at this stage? Sure. Um, I, was, I have uh, concerns, uh, which I, I still have concerns about um, the impact on the conservation areas, about the uh, height of this building, um, and how that will actually invade those conservation areas. We should areas. have to debate afterwards. Brian, get to your questions, my question, please. Sure. So my two questions are um, vehicle access. We're living in a different time now. There's much more delivery. There's much more people staying in and ordering things in. And I don't think this takes in that into account. There is a lay-by access um, which comes off the gyratory, um, but it would seem to me, and I, I, that, that is that not going to create an impossible traffic blockage on the gyratory? Um, the other question is: I believe the state club is going to be the um, is going to manage the accommodation. Um, what happens if there's mass um, vacancy? Will they have discretion to actually offer offer the accommodation to not people who aren't students? Fair question. Um, Councillor Kelly. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Gantz has strayed slightly into my question, but I think um, I can couch it a different way. Um, you used the word ancillary offer, and sort of that that word sort of sort of um, sort of alarm bells because it suggests it's necessary. You know, that's what the word ancillary means. So, how necessary is it for them for it to be viable for them? Um, so, I mean, what assurances are that it will be monitored, that students get the priority and it doesn't go out to market rent as like Airbnb by stealth in, in the height of summer? Okay, um, similar question. Um, Councillor Padder. Oh, my question has been asked already. Thank you very much. Because uh, please don't repeat questions. No, no, I didn't say you did. I'm just saying thank you very much, Councillor Pella. Um, Councillor Mahmood. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a couple of three questions, and I'd just like to um, emphasize clarification, not the questions. You know, when the, the objectors and uh, uh, the Councillor Conti are talking about the height of the building, do you think? Uh, does it require the GLA uh, approval in terms of height totally? That's the one thing. Second is uh, by putting more extension and increasing height, uh, do, we, do we require to change or consider the construction plan as well? Would that be effect on construction plan? As you know that this is the one of the 10 difficult roundabout of the country. And third thing is, I just wanted to know uh, the total uh, section 106 money, which is 214,000, uh, as for my understanding is, would that be included the CO2 offsetting or would that be separate than that? Thank you. Sean. Um... From the top, please. Okay, I'll try and go around in the order that you've asked the questions. Uh, if I've missed something, please just let me know um, and hope to answer it. Um, so, Councillor Rice, you asked about uh, trees in the area. Um, so, in terms of 
because this is only adding height, not uh, width or, or ground floor massing, um, any section 106 needs to be directly related to the scheme and necessary uh, to meet acceptable tests. And that's why, although trees requested it, we couldn't, it was not deemed necessary or um, enforceable because it doesn't meet the test. However, uh, there are improvements to parks, um, which will help, which it's up to the parks team to decide how to use. But with 19,000 odd pounds, that could help towards that aspect. But I need it to emphasize that it's up to the park team of how to use it. Um, so I just hope that helped. Uh, because we're pointing about trees. Uh, in terms of pollution, I understand your point that it relates to the trees as well. Um, there are uh, conditions in place regarding ventilation and air quality, both through construction of air quality and um, once occupied for residents to make sure it, it is at a acceptable standard um and so they're just listed in the conditions at, in the appendix but that includes ventilation um it's also in line with some of the permissions for some of the conditions for the implemented proposal but to highlight these are for the additional floors so that's why they've been placed again they're pre-commencement again so um they will need to be discharged they will be reviewed by the air quality officer at Ealing council to make sure they are sufficient as well and meet all tests uh, Councillor Ball, uh, you mentioned about community use. Um, it is something that, if required, we could mention in the uh, Section 106 legal agreement. We can add that it needs to be a, um, a community use agreement. Um, the applicant has said that they're willing um, to put that. So we can just put that, add that to the Section 106 if that or assist your point. Uh, Councillor, is it Garrett? Sorry if I. Got it, sorry. <laughs> stresses how to say it, by the way. <laughs> Councillor Gallant. Gallant, I do apologise. Uh, you regarded uh, it was to do with access in terms of uh, lay, the lay-by. Um, so the lay-by was caused as per the implemented scheme. Um, just to highlight that in terms of deliveries, part of our student management plan, it would be a, it is a prior to occupation. So that would be close to the time where it's the, the, the occupied, so we'd have more up-to-date of how people have moved, you know, it's not going to be tomorrow, it's going to be a few years down the line. So it's preoccupation in order to be more up to date, to be more relevant and reliant to provide the best outcome of that. That's why it's placed uh, worded as such. So um, they will have to demonstrate that, we'll have to go through the transport team to ensure that it's not going to harm the highways. But in terms of the impacts and the transport assessment, that they have been reviewed by TfL and the Ealing transport team and their comments are in the report, but there's been nothing raised in terms of uh, access. They're not worried about the volume of vehicles. It's not been a concern raised by them. Uh, you also mentioned about making sure this is just for students that it can't be used for Airbnbs. Um, so I guess in terms of the London plan uh, wording is to um, maximise delivery of affordable homes and so they could be used uh, non-term time by other uses however we can restrict the uses that they are used for uh, norm in terms of because of the size of the rooms they're normally done for you know conference delegates or interns on university placements uh, short-term education courses and we can put that wording so um, in the London plan I have put a briefing note about 4.15 0.13. And we can put that word in section 106 in order to restrict it to just those uses specified specifically in the London plan. And then anything that if they wanted to vary at a later date, that would require a different application. It would be reviewed in that course, but in order to remain consistent uh, with London plan policy. Uh, and then finally, Councillor Mahmood, I think. Councillor Kelly, I think, is a, it's a theme on that. But can I just ask a question on, on that? Yeah, yeah. Which is about occupation. So, how is it monitored that 35% of, of, the, of the people using it are getting accommodation uh, at the reduced rates? And, and what sort of, does that student management plan monitor that? How, I'm, and what I'm saying is if there wasn't enough people that qualified, what, would those rooms sit empty or would they, would they be entitled to use them for fully paid students and, and, and how would that be monitored? Because I don't think that's that should be the case. And okay. how would it be monitored? Yeah, so in terms of in the section 106, and so it's just under the heads of terms tables, there's some uh, bullet points uh, just to highlight to uh, councillors. And as part of that, um, they'd have to enter an agreement into a higher level, a third level, high level 
education institute. So they'd be like a partner um, with the scheme. And so the partner would help the delivery of the student accommodation. Now, in terms of the affordable, it was stay 35% affordable. That's in the legal agreement. So it'd be 35% student accommodation. And the scheme will stay student accommodation as per the, what the application is about is for student accommodation. So any changes away from that would require its own permissions apart from as stated in terms of out of term hours, term times. Uh, so it's a legal sorry. agreement, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The legal agreement can include some additional wording to ensure some monitoring as well. So, um, for example, we would normally recommend um, maybe some annual monitoring reports to be submitted, um, and that would deal with that matter quite satisfactorily. That's okay. Sorry, Sean, to interrupt. No, no, it's, it's okay. Um, so, Councillor Mahmood, I think it's just your questions left. You have three questions. I hope I've written down right. Uh, in terms of the GLA, it was referred to the GLA. Um, so we sent all the documents to them and um, they stated that it doesn't meet their test uh, because it's just the uplift of the additional floor. So whatever they've reviewed first time uh, continues. And so their comments are all noted in the report and they didn't want to proceed with a, a GLA stage one uh, or stage two even. They just said to withdraw the um, referral. Um, in terms of the construction management plan, um, so because this is for the additional floors, um, we have put a condition on regarding a new construction management plan because the existing has already been, it's about the implemented scheme, this is the additional. Now we imagine it's going to be quite in line, so in terms of the movement, and to highlight, I have spoken with um, pollution control today, and since the scheme started, there's only been one complaint, and that was in 2020, uh, regarding uh, hours of construction which apparently went over uh, they registered it at 7 p.m when they should have finished at six but it was resolved and there's been no other complaints during the construction period to pollution control that i've uh, spoke to today uh regarding the co2 i just want to highlight the heads of terms on uh within the report so um the development covenants that where prior to occupation of development the assessment carried out in as per the condition that states um, shows that the emission target cannot be met, then they would have to pay this fee prior to the occupation. However, if they can meet what they said they can't, what they should be able to meet, then they wouldn't need to pay it because they would be doing the offsite to themselves on site. And that's why it's got an asterisk and why it's separate to the two. I think you've answered those quite comprehensively, Sean. Um, so now I'm going to go to the debate. Uh, is anyone indicating to speak? And if they don't, I will go to the vote. Councillor Mamahood. And Councillor Ball, sorry. Well, th thank you, Chair. Uh, by looking at the scheme and looking for the 35% the affordable uh, student accommodation uh, 50 unit, and uh, uh, by looking at these uh, 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 13 to story to 16, uh, 13 to 16, and 9 to 11, and 7 to 9, and uh, the contribution now and the benefit for the broader community, like cycle path between, I think, between Hanger Lane to Ealing Broadway. Uh, that That is the offsite contribution, uh, and we can get these type of things done after the development. And uh, uh, I think 50,000, which is called improvement, uh, uh, the section 106 money uh, uh, improvement for uh, indoor and outdoor sports equipment. That's, that's, the, that's the great benefit and uh, uh, improvement for local parks and uh, 50 affordable rooms. So. Uh, uh, on the basis of that, uh, uh, um, I'm inclined to support that application. Thank you, Councillor Mabu. Uh, Councillor Ball. Yeah, thank you. Um, so right at the beginning of the meeting, uh, when we saw the um, visualisation of the uh, currently agreed scheme with the proposed scheme, uh, I think it, it was it's really quite striking how much more prominent uh, the proposed building will be with the extra three stories. Um, and it is 
uh, as Councillor Conti said, it is the gateway to Ealing. It is, you know, if you're coming down the, the North Circular from Brent, it, it's it's the uh, first thing you see as you um, as you come into our borough. And so it really should be something which is a, um, you know, a building which is which is not not a kind of very high and very bland design like this. You know, so I think it is that the proposal we have before us tonight makes it considerably um, more obtrusive, as I say, for um, for visitors driving into the borough um, and also for residents of two conservation areas. So, um, yeah, I, I won't be sporting it. Um, I would say, though, if the committee is minded to grant, I think we should um, take advantage of the offer from the applicant uh, about uh, community use, and we should add into the um, add into the section 106 uh, community use agreement. I mean, that's as I say, I won't personally be voting for the scheme, but I think that's something that if we, if the committee as a whole is minded to go for it, that would be a helpful thing. So then, it, at least, it is of some benefit to the residents around. Are we are we adding that in? this community use we can add that in okay i'm just checking um councillor grant thank you chair um i'd like to echo uh, councillor ball actually when you come into healing you see this a uh, very very large um and um, stalinist brutalist uh, building and that does not speak healing that does not speak uh nature um and i think it gives the also gives the wrong impression um i think it is adding too many people um in a space which is uh which is polluted um and, and you have to go there to see it's polluted um i don't think it's a suitable place um to add that many more people um i also will uh, not be supporting um this application okay do i see anyone else indicating uh, Councillor Padder. Thank you, Chair. I, I think this is a good scheme. It's um, um, it is for students, and especially because it's got affordable, a uh, thirty-five percent affordable units in it. I think this is a very good scheme, and I'm uh, minded to support this scheme. Thank you, Councillor Padder. Councillor Kelly. Um. I, I mean, I I have concerns um, because of the envelope of land that this sits on. Um, what's agreed, I think, goes as far as it ought to. Um, I, I, you know, the um, point was made about trees. And I thank you for um, Councillor Conti, Mr. Hudson's representations. Um, it, it's a it's it's a historic centre for traffic. You know, it's like a chariot race there, and um, it will be it more. This doesn't. This site, it's in putting this on there doesn't doesn't mitigate against any of that, and it will only, in my view, add 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 to it um, quite significantly. I, I, you know, um, and the monitoring of the. Um, affordable aspect out of academic time i have my doubts about um you know because the, the, the market is the market um so i would be minded not to grant this scheme um, as it stands okay anyone else right okay so i will go to the vote in a minute um i just saying that uh, the committee you've got in front of them, not the original permission, it's the extension to the original permission. The original permission was given. Uh, so we are part three, part two story extensions. Um, uh, it's been called Stalinist and uh, around a chariot race. So um, rather descriptive wording, rather uh, emotive wording. Um, I think really it's citing is um, for me, it, it doesn't uh, give a, a deal of harm um, that uh, that I couldn't support. Uh, the one thing I do not like is when schemes come back again um, to this committee for more. So they get existing permissions and come back for more. But on this occasion, I, I am minded to vote for it because I don't see that the harm outweighs the good in this case. So 
I will be minded to vote for it. And I see no more contributions, so I'm going to go straight to the vote. OK, all those in favour, please show. Just have to count. Mm -hmm. Keep your hands up. Three, four, seven, seven, four. Eight, and me, yeah. Sorry. So all, that, all those against, sorry? Three. So that application is granted. Thank you. And we'll move on to uh, number two. Site of form at North Alt. I'll, I'll give you a second for, to uh, site of former North Alt Range Community Centre and part of St. Rayfield's Catholic School. North Alt. Um, thank you for time waiting, by the way, uh, and, and the rest of you. Um, we'll, right. Okay, we'll go on to that. Who's presenting that one? That's you, Wade. Okay, uh, would you like to present, please? Uh, yes, let me just bring this up in one second. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, I just want to apologize in advance if my voice goes. I'm just battling a little bit of a cold. <clears throat> um, good evening, Chair, members, and those listening in. Tonight, I'll be presenting item, well, now two, <laughs> the redevelopment of the former uh, North Oak Range Community Center and part of the St. Raphael's Catholic School. <clears throat> um, the application site uh, is located uh, at the former community center and the eastern part of the school in North Alt. Um, in addition to the community center and parts of the school buildings, the site also comprises a MUGA. Uh, we're going to refer to that a few times, and that's a multi-use uh, games area to the north of the site. Oh, sorry, for some reason, it hasn't caught up with my screen. My, uh, I'm just going to stop and start again. Apologize. So. To catch up, uh, how do I end this now? In show, uh, let me share again. Still slow, I think so. Yeah. Um, should I wait or continue? I think give it a minute. It a minute. No and, problem. And uh, if it doesn't correct itself, then. Then we'll carry on. Wait, no uh, problem. I think we've had too many uh, quirks tonight to uh, to uh, wait anymore. No problem. So it's it's sharing on my screen, but I think it's just taking a minute to uh, share on the feed. It's, it looks like it's changed now. So um, see if you can flick to the next one. I think everyone knows where the site location is because we went on the bus. Yeah, uh, it's not keeping up, but I think I'll see it and maybe just go slowly and I can stop if, it, if I need to. Or... Yeah, just keep going, Wade. Okay. I think it's sure, no problem. because otherwise we'll, we could be here all night. Okay, no problem. Okay, so the site is generally surrounded by um, to the east and the south by residential semi-detached houses with pitched roofs. Um, to the west is the remainder of the school buildings that are going to be retained, uh, which also range between one and two stories in height. And to the north is the open space in the form of the green belt and sink, which is a site of importance for nature conservation. The North Oak Range Community Centre has been vacant since 2017, uh, with all the user groups uh, of the facility relocated at the time. The school is reducing from a three to a two form entry school based on determined local need. Um, and hence um, planning permission for the demolition of the community centre uh, and the surplus school buildings um, and the reprovision of the school facilities on a more consolidated site has previously been granted in December of 2021. Uh, relocating the, the existing school facilities onto a more rationalised and reorganised school site enables the eastern uh, plot, which is the subject of this application, to become available for residential development. Uh, with the potential to optimize this existing brownfield site. The current application is for the proposed development of 92 residential dwellings across three buildings, which range from two to five stories in height. 
along with the provision of child play space, residential um, amenity space, public open space, vehicle and cycle parking, and other associated um, public realm and landscaping works. The proposed homes <clears throat> would be provided in the form of flats across two mansion blocks, one to the east, uh, which will uh, front onto Rustin Crescent, and one to the south, which will front onto Hartfield Avenue, uh, as well as eight muse houses located on the western side of the site. The proposed mansion blocks would be uh, part three and part five stories in heights and would be constructed with a warm buff brick and green metal entrances and balconies, while the proposed muse houses, in contrast, would be two to three stories in height and would be constructed with a light gray brick. These three blocks uh, would all be linked together by an internally located car park um, and a podium deck above where the, the uh, child play space will be located. The proposed homes would be accessed from the north entrance along uh, Rustine Crescent and the southern entrance at the corner of the two roads. Uh, the Muse houses would then be accessed along the landscape footpath running along the western border of the site. The site will also be subject to a comprehensive landscaping plan uh, and will include the provision of a healthy street and active park to the north. The proposed development would optimize the regeneration potential of the existing site and would deliver a total of 92 homes, of which 100% would be affordable housing. This affordable housing provision would be in the form of 84 London affordable rent units and eight shared ownership units uh, in the form of the, the Muse houses. This is a tenure split of 91 or a little over 91% of London affordable rent which are low-costed rented homes, uh, and 8.7% of shared ownership and intermediate product. The proposal would therefore far exceed the requirements set out in London Plan Policy and would make a significant contribution towards the provision of new affordable homes in the borough, and significant weight has been attached to this public benefit of the scheme in the officer's report. While no direct reprovision of the community centre on site is proposed, the site would deliver greater public benefits than the retention of the existing community centre would if planning permission were refused, in the form of not only the delivery of much needed generally affordable homes in the borough, but also through the delivery of, high, of a high proportion of family sized homes meeting a further identified need in the borough, as well as through the provision of a healthy street and publicly accessible active park. As such, the principle of development is considered acceptable in this case. The applicant has submitted a detailed design and access statement in support of the proposal. This document demonstrates how the proposed uh, building form and massing has been developed through a comprehensive and thoughtful design process, including testing the design for its impact on the surrounding area, on wider viewing corridors, as well as environmental considerations such as daylight and sunlight and sustainability. An important part of the design process has been to carefully balance the building footprints with its height um, while providing an efficient and high quality building. The external quality of the, of the building has also been thoroughly considered. The design incorporates several elements that ensure a robust, desi uh, robust design and appearance is achieved. For example, the ground floor um, has been designed to be active uh, and incorporates simple and clear fully glazed entrances. The facade of the building is highly articulated with deep facade returns uh, and the use of materials such as metal framed windows and the use of uh, brick for the facades um, with the various detail that's been incorporated into the facades, ensures that the external appearance is of a high quality and appropriate to this context. While it is recognized that the height and contemporary design of the proposed blocks would not directly mirror the surrounding uh, terraces um, and homes, the overall design has been considered and, and it would not result in harm to the visual amenity of the area despite this. Uh, it is noted that approximately 250 meters away from the site is Grange Court, um, which is a block of flats ranging from three to five stories. And so therefore the proposal would not be materially taller than existing buildings within the medium uh, term context of the site. Uh, some of the images in there, you can show that the site also sits below um, as the topography increases up onto the green belt. So it's not, uh, it's not gonna stand out and, uh, and be overbearing. Um, the layout of the buildings has been arranged to create a publicly accessible perimeter around the site. Um, using the, the, an open space strategy, which incorporates a healthy street approach along both Rustine Crescent and Hartfield Avenue. Um, the proposed de development would incorporate, um, would imp sorry, would improve the streetscape significantly uh, through the incorporation of these elements um, and through the comprehensive landscaping 
uh, plan. This involves, by the way, it's not detailed on my notes, but it involves a increase in the public footpath from around two meters to approximately seven meters, a significant increase uh, along with um, landscaping and trees uh, that creates a, a visual and, um, and safety barrier between pedestrians and, and the street. The proposal has been uh, assessed in terms of its potential impacts on neighboring amenity, including in terms of potential losses of privacy, loss of outlook, and impact on daylight and sunlight. Given the setbacks of the buildings from the nearest residential properties, <clears throat> as well as the uh, orientation of the windows, it is considered unlikely that the proposal would result in harm to local amenity in terms of, in terms of loss of privacy or outlook. It is recognized that some windows would face towards the retained school side. Uh, these are particularly um, the, the upper floor of the Muse homes. Um, however, the degree to which this would be harmful is not considered to be significant, uh, nor would it warrant a refusal in this regard. The daylight and sunlight assessment has been submitted in support of the application. Uh, this report demonstrates that all neighboring external amenity uh, spaces have been, uh, would comply, sorry, with the guidance set out in the BRE. Uh, the results also show full compliance with the window sunlight test. And while there are some minor daylight uh, transgressions, the other arm of, of what we assess, um, these are very localized and uh, the retained vertical sky component and daylight distribution, uh, the later being arguably the more important, uh, results were acceptable in this instance, given that the limited, uh, given that there would be a very limited impact overall on the amenity of the occupiers. At the time of publishing the committee report, there were 236 objections. Um, the, the key planning issues raised uh, and the concerns raised uh, were focused around the, the scale, massing, height, and design of the proposed development, its impact on the local transport network, which we'll get onto in a minute, uh, and street parking in particular, its impacts on local amenity, both during construction and operation, its impact on local facilities and amenities through the introduction of more people in the area, and its impact on the school itself. However, uh, after thorough consideration, it has been concluded and outlined in the report that the matters raised uh, do not outweigh the recommendation for approval in this case on a balanced assessment. All other matters, including uh, impact on local ecology, environmental health, transport matters and servicing, energy and sustainability, have all been assessed and found acceptable. It is recognized that uh, congestion and local parking stress were common themes uh, in the objections received from local residents. The impact of the development on, local, on the local transport network has been fully considered um, <clears throat> with appropriate mitigation in place as set out in the recommended conditions and the legal obligations and contributions. It is not considered the development would be harmful to the local transport network to the degree that would warrant a refusal in this case. Um, it's also noted that, the, uh, that a detailed parking beat survey was conducted, which, de which demonstrates that the expected overspill of parking onto the street um, that, that is not accommodated on site uh, could easily be accommodated without pushing um, the supply, if you will, of cars over 85% of the street's capacity. All considered, uh, the proposal will be consistent with the aims and, and the relevant uh, adopt the aims, sorry, of the relevant adopted policies and documents of the local plan, the relevant supplementary planning guidance and the national planning policy framework. It is therefore recommended that planning permission be granted with conditions and subject to planning obligations and conditions set out in the heads of terms. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, I would just draw the committee's attention to the briefing notes, uh, which contain some minor amendments to the heads of terms and conditions that are originally recommended in the officer report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Wade. I should also point out in the briefing notes that Councillor D. Martin uh, expressed a, a view on this. So uh, you've all seen the briefing notes. Um, okay, right. Thank you. That was very comprehensive. Um, let's move on to the objector, which is Mr. Rick Fox. You have three minutes. You can come up here if you wish, or you can stay and see. Um, stand stay or see. I prefer uh, to stand. Thank I think you, you know this, the, how it's going to go. Yeah. We'll start the clock when you're ready. And in 30 seconds before the end, we will give you a... A check and then at three minutes we will we'll stop you as we will stop everyone. I represent the 220 households on the Edward Road Rushton Crescent Estate who have sent in formal objections to this development. 
We object to this application because our roads in this area are already unusable on many occasions, particularly during the school run or at other peak times. If there is a slight incident somewhere nearby, it has a knock-on effect in the surrounding roads, whereby we are unable to exit our estate, sometimes for several hours. At such times, we are reluctant to open our windows because of the traffic fumes. On occasions, we have watched cars mount the pavement, drive along it, ignoring the pedestrians, attempting to bypass the traffic jam in the road. We think that the parking provided will be inadequate and therefore the vehicles will have to park elsewhere on the surrounding streets, which are already full to capacity in the evenings and weekends, which I understand is not when the traffic survey was done. The extra traffic will result in increased pollution and an increase in street parking caused by so many more residents in the area, as well as during construction. The proposed five-storey building is not at all in keeping with the surrounding area, which is all two storeys. And bear in mind that Grange Court cannot be seen from this site. It's set back from the road um, at the bottom of Edward Road. This building would overlook the school, and playground leading to a loss of space within the school building, loss of privacy to the children and loss of light to the school. Class numbers would need to increase as the school will have less space. Such a five-story building is uncharacteristic and totally out of place in the area. The upper levels will be subject to noise from the nearby shooting grounds which is somewhat lessened for the existing two-storey properties by the earth buns which have been introduced to lessen pollution on the estate. The influx of some extra 300 people to the area will cause a strain on existing facilities such as dentists, doctors and shops, will likely cause increased tension locally, will increase noise in the evenings and at weekends, and re result in a loss of green space. For all the reasons stated, we believe this proposed development would have a serious detrimental effect on our quality of life. And I have lived there since 1946. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Fox, and well timed, I must say. Right. I thought you might have. <laughs> it was precisely three minutes. Um, Right, we have uh, fully agent Ian Anderson. Uh, again, three minutes. We'll give you 30 second warning and we will stop you at, th at three minutes. Uh, oh, when you're ready, we'll yeah, start. Ready, thank you. Chair, members of the planning committee, this application has been subject to the full scrutiny of your professional officer teams who conclude the proposals acceptable on the grounds of housing size and type, character and density, residential distances, impact upon existing residential dwellings, daylight and sunlight provision, air quality, parking provision, highways and sustainability. The Northolk Grange Community Centre has been vacant since 2017, following the council's decision to consolidate provision. All user groups of the facility were re relocated and the building has not been operational since. St Raphael's School is reducing from three to two form entry We've worked alongside the school to assist this downsizing and planning permission for demolition of community centre and surplus school buildings was granted in December 2021. This site is a key part of Broadway Living strategy on behalf of the council to make the best use of the council land and create genuinely affordable new homes. This proposed development would optimise the regeneration of this surplus brownfield site to deliver 100% affordable housing in the form of 84 London affordable rent units and eight shared ownership muse houses. Tenure split is 91% London affordable rent and 9% shared ownership. This exceeds requirements in both Ealing and London plans. The proposal has been carefully assessed in terms of the potential impacts on neighbouring amenity, including from potential loss of the privacy, loss of outlook, and impact on daylight and sunlight. 
Given the setback of the buildings from the nearest residential properties, as well as the orientation of the windows, the proposal will not result in harm to local amenity, nor loss of privacy or outlook. It is recognised that some windows would face towards a retained school site. However, the degree to which this would be harmful is not significant and considered acceptable by your officers. The daylight and sunlight assessment demonstrates that all neighbouring external amenity spaces comply with BRE and, and the window sunlight tests. Significant weight should also be attached to the wider public benefit, not only in the delivery of needed affordable housing, but also in the provision of healthy streets, active parks, and the removal of areas within the site subject to antisocial behaviour. Your highways officers consider there is no, more than sufficient parking on site for the proposals, and that there will not be a negative impact to, to parking air quality arising from the proposed development. Thank you. The application is supported by section 106, which will provide further significant benefit to sustainable transport and safety, children's play, leisure, recreation, healthcare, and overall sustainability of the scheme. Your officers consider the overall design of our proposals exemplary. I do commend this application for your approval at this evening's committee. Thank you. Wow, both of you, bang on. Thank you very much for your contributions. Right, Wade, would you like to respond to any of that, please? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, I, of course, recognise the concerns of local residents, um, uh, and particularly with regards to the potential impact on the local highway network. Um, and this is, uh, you know, one of uh, the reasons why applicants require to submit detailed uh, transport assessments that that look at this uh, in in very close detail. Um, it's recognised that, of course, the introduction of, of any homes on the site are, uh, have the potential to increase the number of trips to and from the site, uh, and that has been tested and looked at in the transport assessment, and the uh, degree of change is not as significant as, as it might seem on face value. Um, not every home is going to own uh, a vehicle, um, and in fact, the if you use data from the local area on um, the, the the extent of home ownership in this particular area, uh, the the scheme is only expected to generate around. I think it's on my slide here, actually. Um, expected to generate around forty uh, vehicles owned by uh, residents of the scheme, uh, with twenty seven being provided on site, which means there's a there's an overspill of thirteen uh, vehicles that are anticipated to park on, on local streets. Um, and the the parking beat survey uh, was contained within the um, transport assessment. Uh, and the details on this slide, and I, I don't think you can see it, but um, it looks at several of the roads so, um, nearest to and surrounding the development. Um, and the the transport consultants had a look at um, parking stress and capacity at different times of the day. One at just after midnight, uh, so that's nighttime parking, people coming home from work. Um, at one at ten in the morning, and then one at four o'clock in the afternoon. And it showed that on average, uh, there was capacity for the additional. Uh, 13 anticipated cars while still retaining at least 25% capacity. That's when I was referring to the uh, the 85%. Um, so it's not anticipated based on the evidence that's submitted uh, that the development is likely to have a significant or harmful impact on, on the local transport network. Um, and over and above this, there have been contributions requested uh, and agreed by the developer to um, to uh, towards highways improvements. Which would further mitigate any uh, any harmful impacts. Yeah. Um, well, there was there was talk about um, uh, air quality being a concern, um, and we do, uh, particularly during construction and for uh, due to the use of vehicles. Um, just on on the construction side, we have got a construction management plan a, a requirement as part of a condition um, that does request quite a lot of detail on um, how the highway would be impacted. But not only that, we have a completely separate condition that requires a dust and air quality management plan to be submitted alongside with the construction management plan. Um, and so air quality is going to be very closely monitored throughout. There's also a contribution towards air quality monitoring that sits outside of that um, of, of, I think it's just under nine and a half thousand pounds. Um, uh, uh, talked about construction. Um, in, in terms of the development being in keeping, uh, um, it, it has been recognized uh, by myself tonight and in the report that the scheme uh, wouldn't directly mimic the surrounding homes, but that's not really, um, that wouldn't be an appropriate design for the site. It wouldn't be an optimization of the site. Um, but the uh, the hearts we don't feel are um, 
so materially out of keeping that they would become harmful. There are two and three story elements in the design, uh, which do more directly relate to the heart of the existing dwellings, because even though they're two stories, they also contain a tall pitched roof. Um, whereas the three story elements in the scheme are flat roofs, so it would be a, a comparable height at the shoulder of the buildings, and it's only the top, the upper floors, which are set in and back, um, that are taller. And so there's a lot of work's been going in uh, into the design to reduce the impact of those additional two stories, effectively. Um, in terms of loss of a light to the school, um, the daylight and sunlight assessment demonstrates that there would be no loss of light to any of the external amenity spaces of the school. Um, and while there would be some uh, transgressions we refer, which is basically where some of the windows of some of the classrooms would be impacted uh, to a degree higher than what the BRE recommends. Uh, in those cases, it's not the only window that serves that particular classroom. And so the overall impact on the amenity of the children in the classroom will be very limited because there are other windows that will be that will continue to serve the room unaffected. Um, noise from the shooting ground, I must be honest, I haven't covered that in my report, but the um, there are several uh, uh, planning conditions within the contained within the report that relate to the sound insulation of the building envelope, which would more than adequately cover that um, because we assess the uh, the internal quality uh, dependent on what the external sound is. So whatever that noise is from from outside the building, the the insulation will have to be able to sufficient. Um, sufficiently mitigate that. And in any case, it was actually brought up, there was a bit of a debate between um, uh, one of the consultants and our pollution technical team, because the existing background noise is so low that some of the conditions were quite hard to achieve, uh, given the fact that it was, uh, the, the area is very quiet. Um, the existing uh, pressure on existing facilities, uh, I completely appreciate that. Um, uh, pressure on local doctors and dentists uh, uh, with the increased number of residents. Um, that is why we have requested £144,000 towards the NHS and a further £118,000 uh, towards improving local sports facilities. Uh, and so what that money will do is it'll go towards upgrading existing facilities to ensure that they can cope with the uh, increase in, in residents. Um, and in the, the final point, and please um, let me know if I've missed anything, uh, loss of green space. Um, there's, the site is, is uh, quite... The majority undeveloped at the moment so yes there is going to be a loss of 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 open space and i say it in inverted commas because the open spaces within the school it's not public open space that's going to be lost um and so it's not it's not quite the same impact on, on the local community if that makes sense uh and as part of the previous application that was granted um a new multi-use games area was approved within the school grounds uh which would more than adequately make up for that um that lost green space um, and so the the decreased number of uh, pupils at the school, which is going to be the case regardless, uh, have ha got new facilities within the school that they can use. Um, and just as a side note, not 100% relevant to the scheme, but that multi-use games area is also subject to a community use agreement that allows the wider community to use that facility outside of school hours. Um, and I believe that covers everything, but please let me know if I didn't. I think you've covered everything. I don't believe that there was anything you missed. Um, okay, let's start with questions. I happen to drift over this way. So Councillor Kelly is first, Councillor Rice, Councillor Ball, Councillor Mahmood. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I wasn't quite sure that. Um, I appreciate fully that you're a town planner and perhaps not an education planner. Um, but how how was that determination made from three to two? Because I, I, I know of sites, having been an Eden resident, that were schools and are not schools. And then a few years down the line, we need more schools. Um, you know, um, was it done by the diocese? Was it done by the council? Was it done by the school? Um, but I do appreciate that you're perhaps not in a position to answer that. Got it. Hold on, Wade. All right. Right, Councillor Rice. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, when we went on the site visit, I was quite actually excited to see that there was the area of ground behind there that's that's gated and it's going to be opened out to the public. Um, but one thing I did think about was um, quite often with the reports is that we get a chance to explore um, 
the work that's been done in order to look at any kind of impact on onto nature, for example, of such an action. There's really there's very little in the report about that. So I just wondered what we had done to actually look at the impact, maybe on on local animals, for example, or maybe just local local plants, and, and just to see what we're actually going to do to to remedy any kind of harm that we might do. Thank you. That's the all. Um, yeah, um, I was struck uh, listening to the objector that quite a few of the issues raised uh, were about the um, the issues at school time, uh, which potentially would be exacerbated by additional cars. Um, is it something that's been looked at in terms of uh, school street scheme, possibly? Um, because then, because if, if you were if you were discouraging parents from bringing bringing their cars in, then that would address potential additional you know that the issues caused by having additional cars there is that is that has that been looked at and, and is that something that could be could be funded from the section 106 potentially councillor mood thank you chair uh, just uh, again the three points of clarification one is just clarify that the the active park uh, which is behind they can't be seen from the road so this active park is not active it's not at the moment usable and after that development would that be on the same place or or you are relocating that active park which can be accessible and useful for the general public who are living around there that's the one second is uh, uh, when you said we, we are the loss of trees and now we relocating trees so are we relocating trees surrounding area near to that development site or or I just wanted to know that the landscaping, like you said, uh, the pavement will be increased from two meter to seven meter, I think so. Yeah, so that, that sort of things we need to know uh, is really beneficial for the broader community uh, in terms of landscaping that that that's the two things okay um and i've got a question for you sorry the the allocation of on-site parking how is it allocated how's it controlled um is it a first come first serve basis uh, and you know as people move out does that become i mean it's it's not a, it's not a cash contribution to have that i'm presuming um so just wondering how it's determined really. Okay, um, thank you everyone for your questions. Um, the first question related to uh, who decided or determined the need to, to um, I suppose, decrease the school uh, capacity from, from two form to, I mean, from three form to two form. Um, the schooling system is very different here to from where I grew up. So. I don't know what uh, well, I know what four means now, but only through this application. Um, the short answer and the honest answer is I don't know uh, who determined that, um, but I do know that the school is a part applicant in this application, um, and they uh, I'm assuming, and uh, I say assume because I can't confirm um, that that would have been based on their own uh, research or their own. Um, uh, Wade. Wait, well, I think Jackie wants to come. Yeah, yes, I, I, I can confirm that it is the diocese who've looked into this and have okay, confirmed good. to us that, that they, they're looking to reduce the number of um, forms of entry. Okay, um, and uh, so there's something else to bear in mind that it's just a change in the form types at the school. It's not necessarily um, meaning that there's a decrease in need for other types of uh, schools, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, the, uh, the second question was um, impact on nature. Uh, it is uh, bordering a sink, uh, science of importance for nature conservation, so that's a very important consideration. Um, the applicant has submitted an ecology assessment, which looked at precisely that, uh, an assessment of um, the fauna, flora, um, uh, protected species, non-protected species of interest, uh, net birds, nesting birds, badgers, bats, etc. Um, and the conclusion of the report was that uh, it's exceptionally unlikely that there would be any impacts on any of uh, those identified species. Um, uh, and there were some recommendations um, and a condition has been recommended that the development be carried out in accordance with those recommendations um, to ensure that, um, you know, any uh, identified species are appropriately 
uh, protected. Um, uh, the third question was about peak hour congestion, um, uh, school school hours. Um, the way I understand it, again, is um, <clears throat> the, the peak hour for uh, school pickups and drop-offs is slightly different to work peak hours, pickup and drop-offs. Um, but the, again, the, the contributions that we, we've sought, uh, some of them are going to be going to traffic calming measures. Um, and so while we appreciate that it's, it's obvious that any additional uh, cars on the road is going to have some impact, um, what we've done in this assessment is we've assessed uh, the degree of that impact and whether or not that would warrant a refusal. And we feel that with the appropriate mitigation in place, um, that uh, it wouldn't in this case, um, and that the scheme should should still be approved. Um, but there's also there's a lot of things we can do uh, to to mitigate that even further, and particularly during construction. Um, and that's why one of the requirements of the construction management plan is to detail um, the delivery of goods to and from the site during construction, and to ensure that these are outside of peak traffic. And that's a that's a very um, important consideration that we we normally carry across all our concerns, but it's a very uh, good question. Um, but just to, to, to put your mind at ease, we have considered that and it is going to go into the, or has already gone into the condition. Um, in terms of the active park, Council Mahmood, you asked about um, uh, its visibility and usability. So the existing uh, facility at the moment is the MUGA, which is the multi-use games area. It's called, it's called the cage. Um, and uh, that you can't see from the road. I think it's mainly because of the fences and the, and the overgrown trees and that around it. But uh, that's part of the reason why it's uh, well, likely the reason why it's attracted a lot of antisocial behavior in the recent years. Um, whereas the proposed active park that's, that the applicant's proposing in this scheme would be fully visible uh, and fully accessible. Um, so we're far more, uh, far safer and uh, user friendly. And I think the public will get a lot more use out of that than they will the existing uh, MUGA. In terms of loss of trees, uh, yes, it is recognized that um, there are a lot of trees that, are, that will need to be removed. Uh, it's, it's, I think, 26 or 27 trees that will need to be removed to accommodate the development, given the fact that the site is um, largely undeveloped. However, the um, landscaping plan proposed uh, would also, it's proposing to plant, I think, 27 or 28 trees. There's, I think there's a net uplift of us of one tree so there will be no net decrease in the number of trees at the site once the landscaping plan is is, is uh, put into place um, but in addition to this we also have a contribution of twenty thousand pounds towards provision of trees outside of the site in the wider area so they um they they will overall as a result of the scheme be a net uplift in the number of trees um uh, in in the area um and the last one was allocation of parking spaces um so one of the one of the conditions we recommended is um, requires the applicant to submit a parking design and management plan, and that would include how uh, parking spaces are allocated and uh, and how that all works. Um, there's also a car club bay that's that uh, if you um, if I just draw your attention to the uh, briefing notes that's also been incorporated to the scheme, and that that will benefit multiple units instead of just one. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah the, at this stage, I don't have an answer on how they'll be allocated, but it, it will be detailed through the conditions. Okay, um, Councillor Pad has indicated for a further question. I'm allowing it because you you withdrew your question and last one. So <laughs> consider yourself allowed. Go on. Actually, uh, my question is so the last point. Uh, the PTEL rating is it says uh, 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 almost the lowest. In other words, it's a uh, almost non-existent access to public transport from there. It's so the owners, it's 92 dwellings and 27 parking spaces on the side uh, with nine reserved for disabled parking. Really, it's non-existent. How, how I can't see how we can accept these things. It should, at least they should, give some parking spaces for residents, 92 dwellings. And these days, most houses have got two cars in a house. And this is, I don't know how, uh, so my oh. question is, I've got concerns on that. Can you elaborate? Okay. Uh, during Wade's um, uh, introduction, he did talk about the parking and, and, and the formula of parking and et cetera per household. And not every house in that formula would have a car, let alone two cars. Uh, and there's other forms of transport, uh, but I'll let Wade 
uh, respond to that? Uh, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I know the, the temptation to um, assume that 92 homes will equate to 92 or more vehicles, um, but the, the data in the local area demonstrates that that's not the case. Um, the figures used in the um, based on on local data is is that the development would likely produce around, and this is you know approximate, but around forty vehicles. Um, and the the starting point in the London plan for for residential schemes is to be car free, where but more particularly where they have a, a higher p tail. So where there is a lower p tail, we do allow them parking on site um, because we recognise that the car ownership in those areas would be higher, of course. Um, but that has been taken into account when calculating the number of vehicles that um, are anticipated to be generated by the by the, the development side. Um, and the parking beat survey does demonstrate that there is capacity on the streets to accommodate the the thirteen that would spill out onto the street. Um, so we so we we believe uh, and we feel that that it's not going to be um, even though there will be an increase, we don't believe it's going to be harmful to the point that would warrant a refusal. Councillor Hamidi. As you haven't asked a question, it's your first planning committee. I'm sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I note that the blocks are um, extended to five stories in height. Um, sorry if I've missed it somewhere in the plans, but is there any lifts in the blocks? Uh, yes, there is, in short, yeah. I thought it was only me that asked about lifts. <laughs> anyway, okay. Right. No more questions. Uh, debate time. Does anyone want to counsel the ball? Yeah, um, I think you know, there's, there's pros and cons on this. Um, I mean, I've got some concerns about the principle of it. Um, so, so if it wasn't for the fact that the community centre had been closed for five years already, that would be, lots, lots of the community centre would be, be a concern. Um, and also, I share um, Councillor Kelly's concerns about um, school places. I mean, it's um, yeah, we we've seen over the years, you know, we we have uh, we reduced the um, amount of um, of space in the in the borough schools, and then we have another bulge of of uh, children, and then we have to suddenly rush out and acquire new schools DPD and acquire some new sites and and and. Uh, you know, find uh, replace it again. So I think you know it's it's potentially a bit short-sighted doing that. Um, certainly, there are concerns about transport. I mean, I'm yeah, I, I'm a bit sceptical about it only yielding forty cars, um, and it would tend to contribute to the problems that already exist at school time. Um, so you know, that's why I mentioned School Street as a possibility, and that certainly that's something. To be fair, that's something that could be done regardless of um of whether it's conditioned or not um but the, the, on the other side it is an 100 percent affordable scheme and you know that's what that's what we need even if you don't count social uh, shared ownership as as, affo as genuinely affordable it's 91 percent genuinely affordable so you know for the, for that reason you know i think the uh, the pros slightly outweigh the cons but it's, it's not a perfect scheme I don't think there's ever been a perfect scheme, Councillor Ball. Uh, Councillor Kelly. Um, yeah, um, just a bit right reply there to to John. So that I, I just wanted clarification, perhaps. And if the diocese say that that they don't need the spaces, then I'll just just to, to be clear, they 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 had a land swap last week at cabinet between the diocese and. The, and the... Okay, so it's fate complete in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't have that concern. Um, um, the th thanks to Mr. Fox for his representations, and I I do do understand how how his um, environs will change. Um, but I think you called it local highway networks. Um, um, way do I, I call them roads? Um, but um, you know we can we can change the roads. Um, afterwards we can we can reroute we can we can do stuff to to ameliorate that um you know i, I mr fox might be able to tell you the year they blocked off tangmere gardens you know because that was used as a rat run it is a labyrinth to get in there that was demonstrated when we went on the site visit you know it is it is an unusual um collection of roads to get to there you think you're there but you're not quite there 
and then you think you're there and so but it will become affordable homes it will become homes it will have um parking spaces it will have a fit for purpose environment um and we do need the homes and um i'm minded to grant this application Okay, I've got Councillor Mahmood and Councillor Gunn, you'll be the last one. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I know uh, why the residents are concerned and looking for the number of the number of the objections about that 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 development is middle of nowhere. And as Councillor Panda said, the petal rate is, is very low. But uh, if you see the the right uh, use of that space that that's the really uh, right use of the space we, we don't usually see uh, the general uh, family houses uh, in new development but i think that's opportunity where i could see uh, eight four bedroom muse houses or muse houses yeah uh, which is which is not usual uh, we could see the muse houses four bedroom houses and, and 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 the family houses and 100 percent affordable uh and uh, uh, park will be accessible for the broader community and uh, landscape and uh, uh, the broader of the payment is directly related to our uh, our manifesto and our policy of uh, active travel uh so and i would be minded to support that application um just to be clear it's not the middle of nowhere by the way north hole is it's a it's an area of its own right council galant thank you <clears throat> yeah um obviously uh i the, the I, I, there are concerns about traffic and obviously it's a difficult area anyway for traffic um but uh but i think enough uh, effort has been put into mitigating that um my, my slight more slightly greater concern was the strain it would put on public services and i appreciate there's a section 106 contribution towards that i'm not sure it's quite enough um but uh but uh, obviously that has been taken into account um but of course as a, as as a colleagues say it's 100 percent affordable it's got family accommodation there um, and this is the kind of housing we desperately need, and I will actually be voting for this application. Okay, I not during the debate, I've not picked up anyone uh, going dissent towards your uh, application. So I'm going to go to the vote now. So um, all those in favour, please show. All that. I'm sorry. Okay. That, that is going to. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. All those against. Any abstentions? Right. Thank you. Unfortunately, you don't get a vote. But thank you very much for you coming tonight and patience for both, for all of you. Thank you. Um, okay, we will move on back to the agenda. If you'd like to have a discussion, please, could you have it outside? um right let's get back to the agenda right okay uh it is nearly uh just gone quarter past quarter to nine i'd like to um be a bit more concise with the officers reports from now on if that's possible um who's next is this you again sean it's joel sorry joel um, I hope you picked up that hint. Um, internet is slow. What, to the wider world, is it slow? Are we still? Are we still uh, broadcasting? Okay. Okay. I hope that's the committee's view as well that we um, we more concise with the officers' reports because you've all read the reports anyway. We don't need to do uh, say the same things twice or three times. And that's no disrespect to any of the officers, by the way.
just to be clear, this is the Westworld Westgate uh, application. Good evening, members. I present to you this evening an application for planning permission that involves the demolition of the existing 10 story office block and the construction of a large industrial unit comprising a hybrid mix of uses, including use class EG3, which is formerly the B1C use, as well as B2 and B8 uses. Ancillary offices are proposed within the scheme, which are orientated toward the front of the site with associated car, HGV and cycle parking, as well as boundary fencing gates and landscaping. The application site is located in a strategic industrial location, which should be safeguarded for uses that are identified within policies E4 and E5 of the London Plan. The uses proposed within the scheme are wholly consistent with the site's strategic industrial location or SIL designation. The existing building comprises offices which are not strictly in accordance with the site's designation, and the proposal would significantly increase the site coverage of the site, better optimising the site and realising its full potential for industrial uses. No potential occupant has been identified at this stage, but the design of the building lends itself to storage and distribution activities, yet the building has been designed with flexibility in mind to accommodate a wide variety of uses, oh, sorry, end users. The design of the building is conventional for industrial type development and consistent with other industrial developments within the borough. Where the building addresses the street, the proposal will provide appropriate articulation and variation in its design to promote visual interest and a material palette that would produce a modern facade through high level glazing, banding and cladding. Uh, appropriate conditions have been recommended that deal with the sensitive receptors, which include a 77th room hotel to the east and Westgate House, which is a recent office of residential scheme within the area. Landscaping proposals are considered to be good and measures have been outlined to increase habitat within the site and control and eradicate invasive plant species that have been identified. A significant benefit of the scheme is the fact that the proposed industrial development would be would achieve net zero, that would, which would be achieved through the lean and green measures that are in accordance with the hierarchies of policies S1, sorry, SI2 and SI3 of the London Plan. This is consistent with Ealing's declaration of a climate emergency and aspiration to become carbon neutral by 2030. The applicant will be required to pay for energy monitoring through the Section 106 agreement in accordance with the B seen measures of the London Plan to ensure that the measures outlined with the energy strategy are met. Contributions have also been secured for air quality mitigation within the area, which is identified as an air quality focus area, and contributions have also been secured for transport and public realm improvements, which are outlined within the consulta consultation section of the committee report. Overall, the development provides for an industrial type development that is consistent with the site's designation as a SIL or strategic industrial location. That will also have local benefits towards employment opportunities and economic activity uh, within the borough and across Greater London. The site is located within a highly sustainable location close to established public transport nodes and good quality pedestrian cycle routes. It is therefore recommended the application for planning permission be approved, subject to the conditions outlined with Annex 1 of the uh, committee report and a Section 106 agreement to secure financial contributions and obligations. Thank you, John. That was uh, far more concise. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, any questions? Councillor Rice. Thank you. And um, there's one point I made on the site visit um, about because uh, there's like a road leading up to where, where this would be built. Um, there are an awful lot of cars there. And so my, my concern was in terms of how much parking is actually needed there, even though I don't want to encourage cars, obviously, how much parking is actually needed. All those cars remain there when we're going to have very large vehicles coming up and down that road. Um, I'm just wondering in terms of as well, how much consultation might have been made with, I think it's Selco, is it the, the traders that are just right next door? I, I mean, is the parking anything to do with them in particular that um, they may need it to be there? And uh, how do we ensure that we don't end up with even with cars being bashed into by, by large vehicles coming coming through? Thank you. I, I presume Selco have large vehicles themselves, but Joel, would you like to answer that? Um, yeah, I might need a bit more context on where we're actually talking about with these cars. The, the road outside, basically the road outside the site, um, the, what I'd call it, well, I can't remember the name of the road actually. Westgate? Yeah, Westgate, sorry. I mean, right. so to be honest, we, we did see that there were yellow lines as well, so I don't think the parking should have been there. Yeah. 
a lot of parking we, we witnessed on Saturday shouldn't have been there, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, there's already similar distribution centres down, down Westgate as well, and it's already used by HGVs as well. So presumption is they can get through. Correct. Or the cars that are legally parked get bashed or don't get bashed, whichever. But um, I don't see any more indications or questions. So I will go straight to the debate. Uh, anyone? Councillor Rice. Thank you. Yes, I, I, must admit, I, I think I will welcome this development despite what I just like said, because I think there's some reassurance there. Um, and um, I, I think there's been some good considerations that have been made here. I made comments earlier regarding um, trees in the area. Looking through this report, it does look as if there is a bit more consideration have been made about ensuring that there that we do think about um, that there are going to be native trees planted. So there's something that's very positive there. Um, and also, I'm glad the fact that we're considering noise in here as well and consideration for the hotel the fox and goose um i did actually have my wedding reception there and so i was actually like dancing with the disco past midnight on a saturday night okay so i did make noise there but um i you know myself in the hotel but um i but i mean normally and that hotel it, it really covers um business use during the week and i can imagine people who were there for to staying there for business meetings would appreciate a good night's sleep so in order to be awake for the next morning so um so i do appreciate the fact that it, I think this has been well thought out um, you know, generally, so I will welcome that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's, let's not talk about any parties. They're a bit toxic at the moment, basically. So, um, okay. Okay. Um, uh, I see no more indications, so I'm going to go straight to the vote, if that's okay with the committee. Okay. All those in favour, please show. All those... Yes, unanimous. I'll just check. All those against? Anyone abstaining? No. Right. We've got the right numbers. Right. Thank you. Right. Uh, let's keep the motoring going, shall we? Um, so we are now on Sussex Crescent. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, so who's uh, Santa? Um. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is item four in your agenda. This planning application seeks to demolish the existing building to provide a four-story residential building comprising 26 flats, which are 100% London affordable rents. The development would provide a unit mix of six one-bedroom units and 22 bed units. And the site is located on the corner of Sussex Crescent. The existing building is a single-story building and was previously used by Norfolk Park Social Club a community facility owned by the London Borough of Ealing and managed by the community. The social club was closed in June 2019 and the building is currently vacant. The existing building is a prefabricated building and is in a state of disrepair. Um, here's some uh, image from Google Earth and some um, existing photos um, from different angle of the street. And the surrounding area is predominantly characterized two-story and three-story buildings. To the immediate north of the site is St. Richard's Church um, and Nursery School. And to the northwest is Wimborne Court, a sheltered housing block of three stories and a one-story girl guy's hut. Directly to the west is a row of terrace housing. To the south on the opposite side of Sussex Crescent is three-story block of flats. And along Sussex Crescent to the east is semi-detached housing. Um, the public transport accessibility level P tower rating is three to four, which is moderate and good. Norfolk's underground station is located within five minutes walk from the application site, and a number of bus stops are within minutes walk. And the principle of the of demolition of the existing community building and provide twenty six flats for London affordable rent, which is hundred percent affordable, is considered acceptable. This is supported by the London Plan Policy S1. Um, redundant social infrastructure should be considered for full or partial use as other forms of social infrastructure before alternative, alternative developments are considered. And policy 6.2 of Yiling's DPD defines affordable housing as social infrastructure. The development will provide 100% genuinely affordable housing 
Therefore, the principle to replace in community facility with 100% affordable housing is considered acceptable. In addition, the proposal will contribute towards a 10-year housing supply and affordable homes delivery target. And the proposed building will be four-story. It is recognized that the proposed height would be similar to the three-story Rainbow Court building to the north, although greater than most buildings along Sussex Crescent and the surrounding streets. However, with a minimum distance of 80 meters away from all the surrounding buildings, this will ensure the new building would not be over dominant within the sighting of the site and respects the characteristic scale of the prevailing locality. In addition, the 80 meter separation will ensure no loss of daylight and sunlight to the residential developments in the immediate surrounding area. The building would have a um, contemporary design that is articulated well with two different types of fabric are uh, proposed across a building with subtle brick banding defining the ground floor level. And the proposed 26 resident residential units would have a range of sizes with mainly one and two bedroom units. In terms of quality of residential accommodation, all units would meet or exceed the minimum space standards. 70% of the units would be dual aspects and no units would be north facing. 88% of homes will meet building regulations requirement M4 to accessible and adaptable dwellings and 12% will be compliant with M4 three wheelchair user dwelling. The three wheelchair homes are all at ground floor level and the upper four flats could be accessed by the staircase or the lift. Um, in terms of amenity space, all units will benefit from private amenity space in the form of a private balcony or ground floor terrace. A resident communal garden is proposed to the eastern side and a green space is proposed to the western side of the site, which would be accessible to the residents and the public. Um, overall, the proposed environment is considered a good scheme as it would utilize an existing vacant site to provide 26 new homes that are 100% affordable. The scheme is considered good design with good living accommodation and amenity space. Therefore, it's recommended for approval, subject to conditions and the completion of a section 106 agreement. And um, I would like to draw your attention to the briefing notes in regard to the new condition and clarification of the officer report. Thank you. <laughs> um, happy to take questions. So the committee should know that it's Anna's first committee tonight so i think she did very really well there and i think you'd all agree that but um well done um okay and you're under pressure from me sorry about that um okay so uh, are there any questions councillor gallant and mirror that very good presentation excellent um just a very quick question you say it's mainly one and two bedroom flats um are there any other sizes of uh, flat there Right, Councillor Kelly. Yeah, it's about the height. Um, flat roof is great, and obviously it brings the overall height down, so to speak. But could, um, I am new to committee, like you. Welcome. Um, uh, what determines that it was four? Why not three? Why not five? I know we can only agree to what's proposed tonight, but how do you come to that determination? Okay, similar to the question Councillor Ball raised at the uh, site visit. He asked why we didn't go higher, but um, no, no, that's not quite what you asked. I said similar, did I not? Thank you. Yes. Sorry, Zana, if you'd like to take those two questions. Yeah, um, so in terms of the um, unit mix is, um, I say mainly one and two because they are different two beds. So they are all one bed, two person units and two bed, three person units and two bedroom, four person units. So they're all one bed and two bed units. And in terms of the heights, um, so obviously the, the, the area is mixed with uh, three stories and two stories. So we feel that four story is um, generally in keeping with the surrounding area. So, and also with the 80 meters um, distance, and um, that's comfortably away from all the surrounding buildings. So you won't be over dominating. If you go higher, I 
I don't know whether it's suitable, but <laughs> yeah. I'll just come in on that. There's two points I was going to make. Um, obviously, um, the officer and yourselves have to assess the application that's put forward and the scheme is as put forward. Um, and secondly, um, uh, yeah, so sorry, it was that, that covered the point. It was basically as it was proposed. Um, and I think we do have to be sensitive, obviously, around the context and how it fits in. I think the four stories is probably appropriate in this particular case. Um, of course, if there were other alternatives, then we, we bring those to you um, separately. But you just need to look at what's being um, proposed tonight. OK, I think those questions were answered. No, maybe not. Councillor Kelly? Because I'm new, I probably uh, didn't quite understand. Because you're new, I'll allow you to come back. Thank you. So, you know, for clarification, as one member says, about the height and the distance to other properties and the height, was that? Was that? Yeah, I yeah. mean, obviously, um, the proposal obviously has to sit within the, the designated site area. Um, as Anna has um, shown you in her presentation, the separation distances between facing windows and obviously the, the space as well we saw on site, there's a sort of green area um, to the um, west of the site, which obviously is sort of um, open to the public. So we need to take all of those um, points into consideration as part of the assessment and not all sites will be capable of taking different types of height. Um, we do look carefully at the impact and harm um, that it might be um, as a consequence. So, um, and in terms of flat roof, um, this, this proposal is um, has been designed to um, meet as many of the passive house requirements. So we're trying to ensure that it's a very efficiently designed um, building for the future and for its occupants, keep those bills down, et cetera. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Are, are you indicating for the debate, Councillor Rice? Okay, um, any more indications on the debate, Councillor Ball? Um, that's it, right, Councillor Rice and Councillor Ball. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, just to agree what Alex was saying there about um, about the environmental considerations that have been made. I mean, that does actually add to my support for this um, for this development as well. And um, I mean, there are just many points on there that I just that really please me. I mean, it is affordable homes. I mean, it is a high proportion of two bedroom homes. I mean, instead of having develop developments where where it's got a very high proportion of one bedroom homes, this is actually about two bedroom homes. This is somewhere which will help um, um, home. Um, families, small small families, young families who are less well off, and that is incredibly helpful as well. I mean, we have got um, kind of concerns when it comes to primary schools in the area that we have that they have seen the drop off in the number of school children coming in. So, I mean, that might be another thing that might attract more young families and, and more feeding into the schools and more money going into our schools. Um, and as well, I mean, it's in the state where we've done an awful lot of tree planting and um, trees for cities have come in. So I, I'm glad, again, I know trees is my big issue tonight, but I think I'm very, very much welcome that, that that's been discussed as well. Um, and there's one thing about the fact that it does, you know, to some people, it does look like a loss of community space. But I know there's been a lot of discussions going on um, in the background in order to ensure that we do bring community space into um, into the you know, into the, into the area, into that kind of immediate area. So um, I will very much welcome it. And I think that in the end of the day, we're going to come up with a really great asset for the for the local area on the race course estate. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ball. Yeah, just very briefly. Uh, I mean, like like the other Broadway Living application, um, it's the the concern is the loss of, of a community facility, but Again, it, uh, the, the in this case closed in 2019, and it's the building's in poor shape. So, I think that's that's uh, something that can be accepted. Uh, and yes, the height at four stories it's certainly certainly not too high in my view. Um, and again, 100% affordable scheme and the passive house design, as we as we heard uh, on site and from Alex now, uh, that's that's really good environmentally. So I think you know this is this is a scheme I'll support. Would, I would ask you how high you would go there, Councillor Ball, but I'm not allowed to, I don't think. And Councillor Rice, I think we talked about trees quite a lot tonight and, and last night, to be fair. So I think uh, if trees is the, the word of the last two days for me. Right. OK, uh, no more contributions. So I'm going to go straight to the vote. OK, all those in favour, please show. Again, yeah. 
just to be clear, no, anyone against? Any abstentions? Right, so we got our sums right. Right, okay. Last but not least, the straight south or is it you, Rohan? And and yes, I should I should point out it's Rohan's last committee. So um and he and he's come back to do this, I believe. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. So be be gentle with him. Well, I've okay. tried to cut it down a little while we were speaking. So. Yes, yeah, I think a, a concise one. I'm, and I'm sorry you're last, but that's just the, uh, the way the dice is rolled. But yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good evening, Councillors. My name, obviously, my name is Rowan. I'm here to introduce the reserved matters application for phase two of the South Old Green Quarter site. This proposal seeks approval for reserved matters relating to the layout, appearance, scale and landscaping for 1,158 residential units across 17 new blocks, ranging in height from seven storeys up to 19 storeys. In addition, 5,533 square metres of commercial floor space would be provided across a range of commercial tenures. Affordable housing would continue to be provided in line with the agreed section 106 requirements. Landscaping, parking and public domain works would be developed in association with this proposal. For the sake of clarity, a reserved matters application deals only with the outstanding details of an outline planning proposal. In this circumstance, the outline cons consent was approved in 2010 and the reserved matters and only matters for consideration are layout, appearance, scale and landscaping. So here you can see the master plan site it gained outline consent in 2010 for a master plan site incorporating a range of uses, including a maximum of 3,750 residential units. The existing section 106 requirement was agreed in 2010 with a range of requirements, including 30% of floor space to be dedicated as affordable housing. The site has received reserved matters approval for a number of phases previously. Importantly, it is noted that this phase Phase two was previously granted reserved matters approval in 2019. That previous reserved matters application approved at planning committee in February, 2019, granted permission for 897 new homes and 17,806 square meters of commercial floor space. Therefore, this assessment has given weight to both the approved parameters permitted under the outline consent as well as the previous reserve matters application for which work has begun on site. So here you can see an aerial overview of the site. You can see the partially completed phase one at the northwestern end of the site. Uh, this phase is now mostly complete and occupied and phase three works have recently begun on site. And so again, through here, you can see images illustrating uh, the completed phase one as well as the central gardens. Now, as mentioned, phase two is located towards the eastern end of the green quarter site out, as outlined in red on this image. Again, as, as mentioned, the reserve matters were previously approved for phase two in 2019. This incorporated 10 buildings with 897 residential dwellings and 17,806 square meters of commercial floor space. Oh, sorry, that's in inclusive of the, um, that should be, I can explain the difference, but I know the, the PowerPoint there says 15,726 square metres of commercial floor space. I can, can come back to that if there are any questions. So the key changes since the previous phase two reserve matters application are an increase to the total number of residential dwellings by 362, a decrease to the total quantum of commercial floor space, specifically the removal of the hotel from this phase and an alteration to the size of the cinema, the inclusion and provision of affordable workspace, the provision of a community center and the provision of a community center. Lastly, it is noted that this application specifically excludes buildings B, C and D as can be illustrated on this image. 
Therefore, as mentioned, whilst this is a brand new application, it is worth stressing that this proposal sits entirely within the parameters approved in 2010 and is not dissimilar from the reserve matters application approved in 2019. And that can be illustrated through the massing shown in the approved reserve matters up the top of this image against the proposed massing proposed under this application. It's worth noting that the height of the tallest marker <laughs> building within the center of the site would be reduced from 20 stories down to 19 stories. So the first reserve matter is layout. The buildings have been laid out having regard to the outline consent as well as the established building pattern that was approved within the previous phase two reserve matters consent. As you can see in the previous massing image, as well as the current layout plan, the proposed layout has not significantly changed since the 2019 approval. All buildings have been logically laid out in a manner where they address the street frontages and open space. Now the outline consent master plan identified phase two as the primary commercial center within the South Hall Green Quarter site. And this proposal retains this function. However, the primary difference between this application and the previous application is the loss of approximately 6,330 6, square meters of commercial floor space. This space is predominantly attributed to the removal of the hotel and the reduction to the size of the cinema. The applicant sought to justify this loss through the preparation of an, preparation of an economic assessment report and a commercial demand assessment. These reports put forward the argument that the proposal was both policy compliant within the parameters, which it is, as well as providing the maximum amount of commercial floor space, which is viable on the site. Council engaged the consulting firm CAG to undertake a full review of the, um, of the applicant's reports. The CAG report determined that in, a, in employment terms, the proposed increase in office floor space will more than offset the reduction in cinema space, which is a low density employment use. A large hotel with conference and other facilities would have generated a significant number of jobs, but with an, without an operator to take it on, it is not a viable proposition. Therefore, the advice is that securing the right type of commercial space at the right price will have a more beneficial effect on the South Hall economy than trying to simply increase the quantum of commercial floor space. Securing support from the developer for affordable workspace as a response to the overall reduction in quantum of commercial floor space may be worth considering. As such, as seen within the heads of terms, affordable workspace is required with the provision of 10% of the total commercial floor space to be provided as affordable workspace. This would be provided on a discount to the market rent on a lowering percentage annually. Additionally, the council were able to gain a community center within the phase of a minimum of 700 square meters. Having regard to this third party review undertaken by CAG, council officers accepted the applicant's position position and sought to secure alternative public benefits in the form of affordable workspace and a community center. The public benefit was considered to offset the loss of commercial floor space, and these matters form the heads of terms to this application. As we move on to appearance, the materiality for phase two is sought to retain the simple yet refined material palette that was incorporated into phases one and three. To, al to align with the wider master plan character areas, phase two is divided into two distinct areas, the quarter yard and park side. A marker building acts as a unique landmark whilst bridging the gap between the two. The quarter yard is defined by strong but simple forms, special tops, and a robust framed repetition. The park side character is defined by consistent rhythm and an ordered backdrop. So the marker building, as shown on the left of this image, is located at the center of the phase two development and is to be the focal point of the wider development. It has been slightly reduced in height since the previous reserve matters application. Building features white brick with black and 
brick and black metal, with black brick and black metal, sorry. All other buildings would predominantly be constructed and clad in colored brickwork. As you can see in these renders, the proposed materiality would provide a simple yet high quality finish. It is noted that the proposal was referred through to council's design review panel on two occasions, as well as being presented to the community review panel. As we move on to scale, the total number of stories, height, scale, and massing have been developed having regard for the approved parameters for this site. The maximum and minimum height parameters for buildings are set by the approved outline master plan, plot vertical parameter plans approved in 2010. Within the phase two site, there would be a range of building heights from seven stories up to 19 stories in the center of the site. The marker building within the middle of the site reinforces the key principle that underpinned the previous approval in having a landmark building at the heart of the scheme that relates both to the town square and the central gardens. Along the southern fringe, there would be a mix of building heights from seven storeys up to 13 storeys, creating four taller buildings that are intermixed between shorter buildings to help define rhythm. Given these facts, the scale is in line, is in line with that envisaged and previously approved. As such, it is considered acceptable. In, in terms of landscaping, the South Hall Green Quarter site envisaged envisions a site that has been heavily landscaped and planted. Landscaping would be distributed across the phase two site, providing amenity and play space for all residents of the development. The, the retail street and town square would provide a high quality public domain that is active and encourages people into the site. Green roofs would be incorporated above every building. The land and the land to the south along the straight um, has reduced the amount of surface parking since the 2019 approval to increase and improve the amount of open space within this area. The town square is seen as a central part of the site where the pedestrian streets meet on your way into the site. The town square and its mirror pool have been well designed and have been recognized by the DRP and CRP as a, as a positive feature of the proposal. Overall, the proposed landscaping has been well thought out and would provide for a high urban greening factor. It would ultimately ensure that this area is biodiverse and a high amenity for future residents. So whilst not specifically the focus of the reserve matters application, this assessment has addressed a range of other matters that have been considered. All units would comply with the London plan standards the gross internal floor space and outdoor amenity space. Car parking would be provided at grade and within the basement. And the car parking proposal would be well within or below the 0 0.7 parking space per unit maximum allowed under the outline consent. The wider site remains on track to deliver 30% of the overall floor space as affordable housing. Council's energy consultant concluded that the proposal was compliant with the outline consent, subject to a carbon offset payment. Remediation of the site has been completed. And lastly, it is noted that no objections were received to this proposal. Therefore, in summary, the extent of the development in terms of use, height, massing, unit numbers, affordable housing, and parking are within the parameters of what has previously been accepted. Furthermore, the reserve matters have previously been approved for this site and the layout, scale, appearance, and landscaping do not significantly differ from that previous approval with the exception of commercial floor space and residential dwelling numbers. The appearance has been improved upon compared to the previous application. The main revisions to the scheme have been assessed in detail and, can, and are considered to be acceptable in this circumstance, subject to conditions and heads of terms. The loss of commercial floor space has been considered and has been accepted. The alternative public benefit 
offered by the affordable workspace and community center and is considered to offset this loss. Therefore, it is recommended that the reserve matters be approved subject to the conditions and heads of terms outlined within the report. I'm more than happy to answer any questions should, should you have any. Right, Brian, I think that was quite comprehensive. Uh, and I think the, the committee did understand that. Uh, Councillor Rice, Councillor Gallant, Councillor Mood, and Councillor Kelly in that order. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm just uh, looking through the, some of the previous um, uh, approvals of, um, of, of this site, and then there's mention a couple of times of a flood relief pond. So I'm just wondering, um, is what's in place going to be sufficient for the for the further phase phasing of the development? Because I'm just wondering how much flood relief do we need to actually take into account and make sure that there's a facility in place to deal with that? Thank you. I hold the questions, the answers to the end. Sorry, Councillor Gallant. Chair, uh, thanks for the presentation. That's a, that's a lot of detail there. Um, very quickly, um, increase in affordable workspace, um, has that been matched to a perceived demand for that? Hold that thought. Councillor, was it Mahmood next, and then Councillor Kelly? Oh, thank you, Chair. The, the, the two clarification. One is, is it, I was, I'm not sure about, is it that mm -hmm. space is falling uh, South Hall Development Opportunity Corridor. Uh, that's the first thing I want to know. Second is the the only difference between the you said to me clearly that uh, the loss of commercial spaces. So is it not designated uh, strategic commercial uh, designated commercial area where we don't need to lose the commercial spaces? And third one is, uh, what are the recommendations from uh, design review panel and community review panel? Okay, that's that's it, Rohan. Sorry, over to you. Councillor Mahmood, just oh, the first one again. Sorry, Councillor Kelly. How could I forget Councillor Kelly? Um, so, obviously, it's reserve matter, which I have limited understanding of. Because I've only just come on onto the onto the committee, um, I want a bit of help with the geography and the access, public access, vehicle access to to this development. You know, which, which roads would be leading into it, and um, will the residents of Eden's, the drivers of Eden's, and the pedestrians of Eden have to look forward to more blockages at the Glassy Junction um, and South Road? Um, whilst this is being developed, because at the moment it's quite good, but it's only recently become quite good. Right. Oh, sorry, interrupted. Sorry, can I just ask for clarification? I, I missed Councillor Mahmood's first question about South Hall opportunity areas. Could you just repeat that? I think he wants to know if it's if this is part of South Hall. Okay, um, so to begin, begin with Councillor Rice in terms of the flood relief pond and is what's going on in this site going to be dealt with sufficiently? Um, so the flooding matter and um, the, I, I believe there's a tanking system that exists under the Central Gardens linear, linear park, which I can um, just go back to. So in, in the, so to the north of, phase two under the, the linear park, there is um, a, a tanking system for lack of a better word that deals with a lot of the flooding issues on this site. Um, there are several conditions related to flooding attached to the original 2010 outline consent. And it is a matter that is um, regularly revisited and discussed between the applicants um, and council's flooding officer. Um, all I can say as part of this reserved matters application is that the original approval anticipated this level of development on this site. And so the approval of these reserved matters wouldn't worsen the situation on site, if that makes, if that makes sense. Um, Councillor, is it Gallant? Gallant? Gallant. Gallant. Um, asked about the increase in affordable workspace and whether that has been matched to demand. Um, Affordable workspace is something that is mentioned within the new London plan 
um, as I guess an upcoming trend. Um, it hasn't specifically been um, referenced from memory in any South Hall opportunity area or policy. It was more um, something that was identified by the external third-party consultant CAG um, as a potential public benefit. They recognized that um, it probably was better to have the right amount of commercial floor space at the right price rather than just seeking to push for as much commercial floor space on site as possible. And that's why they identified the potential for affordable workspace on this site. Um, and that would be secured um, by the heads of terms. And you, you can see that um, the heads of terms say it, it's um, a reduction of 60% of the overall rent in the first year and 50 in the second year and so on and so on. Um, so I, I couldn't say it's specifically been Match to that. that area. Just in summary, obviously, we don't currently have our own um, planning policy requirement. However, there is a requirement, obviously, in the London plan. Um, and it may be something that will come out of our London, uh, our local plan review. And it may well be something we, we put forward as a new policy requirement. Um, in terms of demand, obviously, um, uh, it's likely there is a demand, um, otherwise the independent assessor would not have put forward that as a recommendation. And I think it also aligns with this this council's administration's manifesto pledges around obviously providing those affordable jobs. So in that context, it's appropriate. Um, it's, you know, it, I think it's in, in response to obviously the question that we have in terms of looking at those changes in the reserve batters, um, and it's a, it is an appropriate mitigation in the in these circumstances. Uh, and it, the minimum is twenty percent. It goes down in, in years to twenty percent and stays at a twenty percent discount. Yeah, there's a That's cascade right. of different discounts that we've set out in the officer's recommendation report. Um, in response to <coughs> Councillor Mahmood, uh, yes, this site is part of the South Hall Opportunity Area. Um, I don't think it's specifically designated as a commercial area, but it was definitely identified as um, contributing to the commercial floor space within the South Hall Opportunity Area itself. Um, so some weight was given to the South Hall Opportunity Area framework, but at the same time, we considered uh, the, the reports put forward by the applicant and the third party review that we undertook as part of our assessment. Um, in terms of the recommendations of the DRP and CRP, there were quite, um, quite lengthy recommendations given by both of those um, bodies that are detailed within the report. Just in terms of the, the changes that were made that I can specifically point to, um, the applicant made the following changes to respond to the comments made by the DRP and CRP. Um, there was a significant reduction in surface parking along the southern edge of the site. Um, I'll see if I can find the best image too. So if you look at the, the southern edge of this site, um, as part, under the 2019 approval was covered with surface car parking. And in response to concerns raised by the DIP and CRP, that was significantly reduced and converted into open space. Um, they also had a number of comments regarding the building design. Um, building D, I believe it is, now has rounded edges as you walk enter the site. The marker building, um, which is the 19-storey building in the middle of the site, was significantly reduced in width um, to ensure that it was less dominant. Um, and then again, along the southern edge, all of the buildings were reduced in height and there was fewer apartments compared to the original design. Uh, so I guess there's some of the specific aspects I can point to that were responded to following points raised by the DRP and CRP. Um, and then Councillor Kelly discussed access into the site. Um, I'll just try and find an image that best responds to this question as well. She's mentioned in the report. Right, isn't it? Yeah, so the outline consent has 
two key access points. There's obviously to the east and south road connecting to the south road bridge. Um, and that intersection is nearing completion at the moment. I believe it's meant to open by the end of this year. And then there's an, a western access um, road. As part of the outline consent approved in 2010, there are a number of works required to um, intersections within the wider area, not just on the site itself. Um, and they need to be undertaken at certain development thresholds based on the number of development units on site. Uh, so I, I guess I can't specifically say that, well, I, I guess all I could say in that matter is the 3,750 dwellings that were approved in principle on this site were envision, envisaged um, and the transport impacts considered and the road improvements required um, are listed under the section 106 requirements. So those impacts have been considered under the, the earlier approval. Okay, thank you, Rowan. Uh, Councillor Khan, again, you get the, you get the newbie. Please, please. A very small uh, correction is uh, there are lots of numbers, units of numbers are going up, but there is no, have we provided educational or schools or health, health or parks? About seven, 8,000 units are going up in this area. Yeah, so essentially, the the original outline consent sets the the all the mitigation conditions um, and the section one hundred six and all of those things have, have been included as part of the original section one hundred six agreement. So because it's an outline, it means um, as Rowan has explained, um, is that detailed elements come forward as as a separate application. Now, committee will see some of these types of application come forward you will either be looking at a full planning application or in some cases a hybrid where you've got uh, an outline plus a full component as one of the application proposals so um it's it's a recognized mechanism and type of application that um, is part of the planning process so essentially the outline is 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 setting out the principle of the scheme and then details um will follow but set within parameters and the themes that um, Rowan has set out in his presentation, layout, scale, massing, landscaping, appearance, things like that. I think the question is more specifically worth, worth uh, my understanding is they are um, in the, the uh, overall initial scheme. Um, yeah, I mean, most simply, yes, there is a requirement to deliver it. I, I think it upgraded educational facility or a new educational facility, which I believe is likely to come forward at phase four. Um, but there are educational requirements that they have to deliver. And in South Hall, already we are facing lots of difficulties in schools. And these numbers of units, that's, yes, these are acceptable. These are required in that area in order to develop near the station. But we need to consider the uh, schoolings of the children and and the parking, park, not the parking space or the park and the health activities for the for the children. I think, Councillor Khan, if we go, we can't go back to the initial um, debate. But I think that you'll find that they are in the outline a lot of these things, and they will come forward, as Alex has said, for us to determine the detail. Uh, I think Jackie's just going to correct me. No, no, not, not at all. Just, just to say it's a bit like a jigsaw with the outline setting the overall things that need to be provided and something may or may not come forward in a particular phase. So just because there isn't any provision coming forward towards education in this phase isn't to say that it won't make make its appearance in a, in a different phase. Um, but as, a bit, as everyone's been saying, it just has to conform to the overall outline and the um, the requirements that were set at the beginning. Okay, did that answer your question? Right, okay. No more questions. Any more uh, indications for debate? Councillor Ball. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the, the I think, you know, the, the overall design of what we're seeing is very high quality, uh, as are the, 
the existing phases that have been built. But my concern really about this application is uh, sort of heading in the direction of, of, you know, piling in more units, but reducing the facilities for the future occupants. We've got a, a, a huge reduction in the size of the cinema uh, and we've got 66%, uh, we've got 17% reduction in the retail space uh, and the healthcare is, doesn't give a percentage, but it's less than half the, the space. So, you know, that's, that's my, that's my concern about this, this scheme. Um, whether it's enough to, to actually vote against the whole thing, I'm not sure, but that's the, that's my, certainly in, in terms of future um, phases coming forward, uh, I, I hope we don't see more of that, you know, more of, you know, reduction of the facilities again, you know, Education will come in a future so I hope they don't decide well actually we haven't got room for a school you know <laughs> you know that's that's my concern is the direction of travel where it's just becoming enormous numbers of units but but no facilities for people. I hear you Councillor Ball. Um, 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 right I do so, don't see any more so it's you, you now need to make up your mind Councillor Ball. <laughs> um, so we're going to the vote. All right, all those in favour, please show. But again, right? No, not unanimous. Uh, those against? All. Uh, any abstentions that I've missed? No, right, okay. Right, that concludes the... Um, committee tonight uh rohan good luck in your future uh wherever that may be i'm not aware but good luck and thank you for your time at ealing um so the next meeting is uh, 20th of july um some of you will be here some of you won't um uh thank you everyone for your participation and your patience tonight it's been a longer one than i thought it was going to be but Never mind. Okay.